He ordered his eight free COVID tests from the government because if there's anything he loves, it's the government and tests. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The church will get a mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We'd love that about you. Right, Gina Grant? That's right. And Bald Brian. And this breaking news. Adam Carolla is, in fact, gay. Oh, shit. Well, uh, I'd heard, I've always said to everyone who will listen, uh, you want to know where we're at as a society, you got to watch the commercials because uh, that's where we're at. And uh, it spills into fashion and design and sitcoms and stuff like that. But if you want a 30 second right. snapshot up to date into right where Time. we're at. Yeah. As a society, you look at the commercials or the ads or the spots, those are where we're at. And I think anyone who turns on the TV or opens a magazine now sees big fat chicks and Sports Illustrated. Every family is mixed. I get a little, sometimes I get a little obsessed on the mixed family's kids. They sometimes have, a sometimes. little? Sometimes. They have a five year old and a seven year old, and the seven year old will look mixed, but the five year old's got red hair. And I'm like, is that from this relationship? I, I have to know. Well, they're probably Brady Bunch style because that's part of the representation. Ah, yeah, that's the mix, right. I would yeah, think. Mixed family. Well, then why is the seven-year-old mixed? Anyway. Don't you worry about that. Could come from another mixed right. family. Um, so uh, I found out today that uh, Calvin Klein has an ad. Huh? They're and, still uh, doing ads? I feel like that's so they're old school. Doing, they're still doing ads. Now, I grew up with Calvin Klein and Brooke Shields. <laughs> Bending herself yeah. into a pretzel at age 14. Yeah. Hey, Brooke, you're so pretty. Yeah. Like that off the mic dude. Right. But that's yeah. where we were at in 1981. And now we're at a different place oh. as far as the Calvin Klein ad goes. It's, oh, my oh. God. All righty then. He has quash your core. It's a uh, pregnant dude. He's very distended. Um, now. And I'm wonder. I'm guessing his lady friend. Oh, I don't even transition. I can't even begin to think figure so. out his lady friend, but it's a dude in his Calvin Klein underpants. Is this real? I, uh, yeah, this is this is their new Mother's Day holy campaign. Holy crap! This, year. this is for Mother's Day. It's a it's a dude with a beard. Looks a little Syrian or something. He's got I, a tattoo. Very masculine. Has a very hairy belly. It looks like, and looks like some scarring under the breast. Yeah, I was gonna say. You don't say. Cut. Yeah, so well, top surgery. Looks like he had some top surgery, although yeah. that surgery looks like it was done with uh, the lid of a cat food can from 1974. Oh, then you do not want to see what's going on oh, under my shirt. You are right. Oof. Uh. I, I still feel like if this thing, if that breast removal was done in modern, more modern times, although he does, the guy looks to be 30. He has this sort of biracial, by something gal pal with some tattoos uh, hanging on to the belly, laying across the bed, and then he's leaning up against the side of the bed, and he looks to be about eight months in. So I'm guessing it's a gal that got the breast done, didn't seem to do the beard or the uh, the electrolysis, got the breast done, kept the parts the same downstairs and got pregnant. Right. Is that, is that what's so going did, on? So did... Hormone replacement therapy or whatever, but didn't do, but still like didn't get a hysterectomy or anything. But if you do the hormone replacement, do you have the hairy belly and the beard? Well, if you're replacing it with female hormones, I am not an expert, but I'm guessing that's what that means. You're replacing it with the other sex's hormones. Oh, oh, you did the male hormone on right. the female. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sorry, I see. This, this is my, this is one of my biggest problems with uh, when. You know, the guy's in prison and then he claims to be a woman. And then we have to do the stories where when she was 17, she went into the bathroom of the Denny's and she sexually assaulted a woman. And like she. Oh, no, he. Right. Oh, OK. He was a All right. yeah. and I know we've talked about this before, but like if we're referring to the person who is in the Olympics, we were we nowadays we, we still refer to Bruce Jenner. Right. I say because that was the person that was in the Olympics. Yes, I, at the time, his name's in the record books. I'm right. old fashioned that way. If yeah. you were, if you're throwing a javelin, or molesting someone in a bathroom, until you get your javelin cut off, mm. uh, you will 
what, whatever that crime you committed when you were a dude, just because you're calling yourself something else eight years later, uh, well, let's just go. He walked into the bathroom because he did. You're walk, setting your ways. He did. He At did that walk point, into the he bathroom. He walked into the bathroom. Right. So I was thinking, all right. So here we are. I need to see that picture again. Calvin Klein's got a pregnant dude, and uh, the uh, Burt Reynolds movie. Where he got pregnant, hmm? although it could be. Wait, wasn't that an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Yeah, maybe it's another Burt movie. Burt Reynolds. Yeah, so this is a rabbit. Pers- rabbit test was oh. the name of the Burt Reynolds one, but I can't. But there was oh. a dude who got pregnant in, in a 1979 oh. movie. Right. I think we watched the trailer to that a million years ago. Yeah. So sorry. What's it say, Chris? Oh, this is a. So this is a Brazilian couple. Roberto is the pregnant, the pregnant mm-hmm. trans man, uh-huh. and uh, his or his partner Erica is a transgender Told woman. Mm hmm. And uh, he already had his baby mm. uh, as, as of uh, the Mazel recording. Mm-hmm. Good for him. And he gave birth to a question mark. <laughs> Jesus uh, fucking Christ. All right. So they, these, all right. Well, a son. They, a son. These are the kind of, well, now. be careful. Yeah, Chris, that's not. I can't yeah, say that. No. Can't, no, because why should any doctor assign a gender just because you're a woman mm-hmm. or a man? You, They should get to decide at some point. That's, there that's, are many people who agree with you. These are the fall of the science <laughs> crackpots, by the way. These are the crackpots who want you to follow science. All right, so the kid will decide who they are when they're seven and a half. Uh, but I said, let's do me a favor. Find me the commercials I grew up with because mm. it was a different it was a different world. And I love the theme of the old commercials because it was always about the wife coming up short and ring around the collar. Desperately trying, desperately trying to make things right for her husband. Uh, We got ring around the collar. Oh, we do. We got the second cup of coffee (laughs) and and, coffee. And then we have my favorite, which is the uh, end us the white glove treatment. Oh, the the (laughs) mother-in-law. Could you imagine your mom walking in on Christy pulling white gloves out of her purse and going? What kind of home are you running here? It looks clean, but is it? And then she takes her finger and drags it along the casing on top of a door jam and then pulls her finger out and puts it in Christy's face and goes, really? I'd be, lost son? The, I'd be lost in the white gloves. Uh, my well, son has to live imagine? in this bill. <laughs> At that point, Christy and I love your mother. We're just talking about a mother in general who did that. You have to be like, Motherfucker, go check uh, your mom. It, it should tell her to go stay at a fucking hotel if she doesn't like it. Yeah, but again, simpler times. Yeah. So we got ring around the collar. This is the woman who's ironing. Oh boy, that I haven't seen in a ring while. Ring around the collar. Ring around the, the collar. Ring around the collar. Those dirty rings. You try scrubbing them out so and upset. soaking them out, and you can still come out with ring around the collar. Now try whisk. Concentrated whisk goes right on the dirt. Its unique formula sinks in and starts to clean before you start to wash. Gets even permanent press collars really clean. Whisk around the collar beats ring around the collar every time. Pretty shirt. (laughs) Pretty shirt. So she's obviously distraught because her husband's got to go off to work. She's fighting with a bird. Ring around the collar. I, the guy's wearing a tie that's pretty well cinched up. Yeah. I, I argue you don't really see the... I've had... You get ring around the collar when you do shows and you put makeup on. You. Absolutely. You will see the makeup on the collar. But sure. if you wear a tie that's cinched up. That's a secret between you and your wife. That's right. And that's mm-hmm. it. You mm-hmm. and your neck. Yeah. It's more of a secret shame between Indeed. you and your wife. Yeah. And then we got uh, the second cup of coffee, which I I always love. This was my favorite. And again, you know, I'm watching these commercials when I'm nine thinking, I guess this is the world we're yeah. living in. So I'm going to marry a woman one day who's going to be really upset <laughs> that I, I didn't love her coffee. And way to internalize back then. Like, right. she takes this really personally. Oh, sure you can't stay for more coffee? Well, it's late, and Jim never has a second cup. You know, I'd love another cup. Jim never had seconds of my coffee. And I made pretty good coffee. But that night, we both discovered Uban. Uban, special coffee, because it's made with special uh, There's a couple beans. things I like. I like that she has put his uh, inspector uh, inspector detector <laughs> hat on yeah, him and said, like, we're hat. leaving. Yeah. And then I kind of like her gumption. Yeah. Like, she's asked if they want some more coffee, and she slides right in. I could, hey, whoa, no can no. do. Yeah. That's a no-fly zone how we work here. in this family. Yeah. yeah, we're heading to the car. Jim it's, doesn't do that. It's clear that Jim's fucking the neighbor, right? Yeah, Jim peeled so. away pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, so long. <laughs> Isn't that the exact same actress that was in Airplane doing that exact same scene? Is that scene? her? That's her. Because they, they do the exact thing. Yeah. Yeah, when they're going to the moon. That's the second That's one, her. right? I'm going to call the hat they put on Jim. 
It's a deep dive. Mm. My Ellery Queen hat. I believe there was a detective show in the later 70s called Ellery Queen, which I've never brought up before. Never, never heard of it. And he wore a hat. <laughs> now, by the way, this okay, guy's wearing Grandpa. a blazer and a white shirt. For some reason, wearing a crazy, like, Jack Klugman it's tennis hat or hat. something. A <laughs> fishing hat. I, I know they needed the hat symbolically to say we're leaving. Yeah. But I would buy a couple leaving a party, Brian. Yeah, that happens. You ever had a party and someone tried to leave and like, where's your hat? Oh, How do I know you're leaving? At some point, at least 99% of the guests try to leave. At the, yeah. the party, at least, right? At least. <laughs> yeah. It's almost um, a given. You're right about the hat. And uh, then there is, uh, now, Ellery Queen, you guys have to understand that. White guy? Uh, yeah. All of the. Uh, Very. Yeah. All of the. Detective shows from the late '60s and the early '70s are always like Mannix and Cannon and something. Ironside, Ironside, and they're like rough and tough dudes driving cool cars and all that kind of stuff. As it got later on, somebody went like, "We should go against type. Let's mm. make a quirky detective. Uh, you know, let's make a guy who's got some foibles and whatever." This so, was the monk of his day. Yes. Yeah. He oh, has yes. A, this guy who played Frederick Danay. Dan he was kind of popular or recognizable he, back then. Does he have a little bit of a John Mulaney thing going on, or am mm-hmm. I looking at the. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Never thought about this uh, detective Let's put show. It up. But I've never heard of this until now. I want to see the white glove commercial so I can be happy. This is... Uh, Hi, Blanche. How's tonight's dinner party Blanche. coming? Blanche. Fine. Want some coffee? Oh, Blanche. The place looks spotless. Oh, it should. I've cleaned all morning. Oh, oh no. The white glove. The white glove's gone on. She's dragging it everywhere. Caught by the white glove. Poor Blanche. She should have used M-dust on her dust. dust can't escape. All right. Use so she's M-dust. humiliated because her friend found dust and brought a white glove a bitch. to the party. Yeah. But now we got pregnant dudes. So here we are. Yeah. We've done it. Some call this progress. Diane Keaton was the other girl in this commercial. Ellery Queen. What? When would that show run? And what the hell was it? And why do I think the guy wore a hat? That's uh, that's the pressing question of the moment. Uh, Bill uh, Browder is going to uh, zoom in momentarily as well. Knows all about Putin and all about money and all about money laundering and all about the mob and the Russian mob. Is he, he going to teach us how to launder money? I'd love to know how to launder it. I use whisk when I launder he, my right. money. <laughs> uh, Ring around the dollar. Change around the well dollar. Done. Yeah, Thank that was you. good. All right. Uh, is there an Ellery Queen? You're telling me one of those women opening. was Diane Keaton. The, I think the kitchen lady. The, really? Oh, caught by the white glove. I think that was. Wow. I mean, if any, if either one of them was Diane Keaton, that was the one. Yeah. All she right. Was the Godfather in '72, and then this. <laughs> in that order. We're, we're pulling it. Ell- Ellery Queen went, went for one season, seventy-five to seventy-six. Mm. <laughs> Why? Was That's it? how little I had going on in my life when I was ten. Who I just it? watch it. Ellery Queen. You had to name your series, your detective series, after the after the detective. Okay, so what about yeah. Bob yeah, Queen? The question. Yeah. The fuck is it Ellery? Ellery Queen? Well, you don't Sounds have like, Madam. All you have is all you have is the title, and that's just the name of the guy. Right? Okay, yeah. So, you know, it's it's good if you're um you know, if you're going uh, Cole Shack or something or, or a Kojak Cannon or Kojak. Yeah. There was a Kojak and a Cole Shack or something. Of course there was. Yeah. All right. So we got Ellery Queen. Did he wear the weird hat? Maybe Ellery Queen was a writer? Detective? Solving crimes. Uh oh, broken glasses. It's very noir. Yeah. yeah. It goes nowhere. All right, I don't need to see it. I just need a picture of him in his hat because I have a weird thought about Ellery Queen wearing a funny hat. All right, so you'll tell us, Chris, when uh, Bill zooms in. 
And am I making up my Ellery Queen hat thing? You're not. I'm looking at it right now. He had the tweed version. Mm-hmm. That That's meant, the hat. That meant you were a detective back wow. then. Bill will uh, be joining us in uh, just a just couple a second, of seconds yeah. now. He's on Putin's shit list. Mm. Yeah, he, uh, well, here he is, so we can talk to him ourselves. Bill Browder, can you hear us? I just got to unmute. He'll unmute himself. Yeah. He's in England somewhere. I don't know if he wants to say where he is, but Hello. Uh, he's joining oh, us. Thanks for joining us. Freezing order, true story of money laundering, murder, and surviving Vladimir Putin's wrath. So pretty good timing on this book, since it's all about Putin these days, and certainly all about oligarchs and money laundering and freezing assets. So uh, let's let's dive right in. I will start here. You were the largest foreign investor in Russia up until 2005. Uh, that's that's correct. I I ran an investment fund called the Hermitage Fund that I started. Uh, just after uh, Russia sort of set up its privatization program, grew from nothing to become the largest investment fund in Russia, uh, I started to um, uh, find corruption and stealing in the companies I was investing in and got upset by it. And so I started to expose the corruption. And, and as you can imagine, that didn't make me very popular and on, um, in November of 2005, I was expelled from the country and declared a threat to national security, <laughs> at which point I started liquidating my assets and evacuating my staff. And me pissing his pants and shitting his pants. <laughs> did, evacuating uh, your assets. Right? Yes. Did, uh, I mean, Putin's got kind of a, a rich history of getting rid of people he doesn't like. Do we know how many people he's gotten rid of? Um, well, I mean, it, it all it depends how you count it. So, I mean, he's getting rid of people in Ukraine on a daily basis, thousands and thousands. He's gotten rid of people in Chechnya, tens of thousands, people in Syria, tens of thousands, and of course, all the people in Russia, and um, there are you, you know, also tens of thousands. And so, you know, Putin is a mass murderer, uh, a serial killer on a scale that, that very, very few people have seen. And is it true uh, after the after Trump was elected, Putin wanted Trump to send you back to Russia? <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. So I, I, I normally live in London, but I was actually in America at the time. I was just about to start writing my book and um, uh, I was going to watch the summit, but I decided, you know, uh, you know, I'm sure I can read about it afterwards. And so I, I, I put my phone on mute and turned it face down and vowed to myself I wasn't going to turn it over until I'd written a few pages and turned on my computer and started writing. And and I don't know, about an hour later, I had almost like nothing to show for it, maybe like two sentences. And so I turned my phone over and I saw the, like 176 messages on my phone and everyone from all over the world was saying, Bill, <laughs> you, have you are you watching Helsinki? And, and I wasn't. So I turned on the... Um, uh, I, I turned on the the, the uh, video link so I could watch the playback, and there was this press conference with Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump. It was it was a uh, Monday after on the previous Friday that that Robert Mueller had indicted twelve Russian military intelligence officers, and one of the journalists asked Putin, um, "Are you going to hand over those twelve military intelligence officers?" and and Putin said, "Yeah, maybe, but it ha would have to be reciprocal." And if I hand them over, uh, I would expect uh, that President Trump would hand over Bill Browder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and and so, so, so then, then the question was, uh, well, what, what was Trump going to say? And so the, the, some other journalists said, well, what, what do you think of that, President Trump? And he said, I think it's an incredible offer. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, okay, I mean, technically, 12 guys for one rider, yeah. you know. <laughs> Wow. Um, so, well, I mean, I'm a little bit, I mean, I, you know, he doesn't, it's not my writing that he doesn't like. It's more than that. It's, it's, it's the Magnitsky Act, which, which freezes his assets that he doesn't like, which I was responsible for. Yeah. You said he was killed over 200, a $230 million tax scheme. Oh, you're talking about There's, your lawyer? Are we talking about? So, uh, so, the, so. The, the reason I'm, I'm on Putin's shit list is that uh, what happened was that 
I was subject to a, a really complex fraud in which a bunch of government officials and police officers and organized criminals stole uh, a bunch of documents from my law firm's office and, and then used those documents to orchestrate a, a complicated fraud in which where I had paid in the previous year $230 million of taxes to the Russian government. And then they stole my uh, companies that paid the taxes through an identity theft and then asked for the $230 million tax refund. And I had a young lawyer named Sergei Magnitsky who identified the fraud, exposed it, and in retaliation, he was arrested, tortured, and killed in police custody. And, um, and since then, I've made it my life's work to go after the people who killed him. And that led to something called the Magnitsky Act, named after my lawyer, which was um, a piece of legislation which freezes the assets and bans the visas of um, Russian human rights violators. Uh, and um, Vladimir Putin went out of his mind when the law was passed. He banned the adoption of Russian orphans by American families and he made it his single largest foreign policy priority, peel the Magnitsky Act, and then he started coming after me. And um, they've chased me all over the world with um, arrest warrants, Interpol, notices, um, surveillance, uh, rendition plots, um, and death threats. And um, I've been on the hit list basically ever since then. It's like uh, it's like it's like Salman Rushdie. This is Putin's fatwa against me. So how many people have optioned your movie? Well, lots and lots of people have come to me um, asking for to buy the option, but I'm not a I'm not a sort of typical author where I need the the you know the small option fee, and so I'm waiting for the right sort of situation to emerge before I before I go down that path. Yeah. I don't want to. I mean, there's so how how many books have how many great books have you read where you've seen the movie? or whatever, and, and said, wow, the book was a lot better than the movie. And, and, and when I do this, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want that to be the case. So what's your day-to-day -day like? Do you have security? Can you not talk about it? We, we know you're somewhere well, in, in London, perhaps, but do you have to you know, run serpentine to the mailbox? Well, um, you know, the, the whole idea of securing yourself it, it's not like in the movies. I mean, the last thing you want to do is hire a bunch of um, former um, military guys um, who are <laughs> um, effectively working for you one week and then working for whoever hires them the next week, and it may be your enemies. That's like the surest way to get killed. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people who have been in danger who have hired teams of bodyguards and, and been killed. And I'm sure you've seen, you know, if you look at you know, famous stories of people being killed, them and their bodyguard or their bodyguard right. and, or they got killed and the bodyguard survived. And so I don't think that's the way to do it. The way to do it, and, and, and by the way, there's no science to this, this whole idea that, you know, these security specialists, it's kind of nonsense. It, it, it's common sense how to stay alive in a situation like this. And you have to say, okay, if you were, you're, if I say, if you, if you were my enemy, what would you do? And then I try to then work my way back on how, how to make it really impossible for you to do that. And, <laughs> and so it's, it's more about um, uh, protocols and intelligence and information and so on than it is about having a bunch of bouncers hanging around you. Where are we at with, <clears throat> the oligarchs and Putin and sanctions and, you know, the war broke out in Ukraine and we announced that we're going to do a bunch of financial sanctions and some some of the oligarchs didn't make it onto the list, perhaps. And then there was a lot of discussion of this is going to hurt Putin, then a lot of discussion of, oh, it's not going to hurt Putin. Where is it? Is it effective what we're doing and how would it affect Putin? Well, for, uh, there's there's a lot of questions there. Let me let me try to try to deal with them one by one. So, for, for, first of all, it, uh, san, san, the idea of sanctions can either be a deterrent or it can be a punishment. In the case of Putin, if we had done sanctions before he invaded, it could have been a deterrent, and we wouldn't have had to sanction, you know, thousands of people. We could have picked like five oligarchs and sanctioned them. And then stared at Vladimir Putin and said, if you want to invade, there's going to be 100 more of the highest value targets on the list. Are you sure you want to do that? And if we had done that, Putin might have had a different calculus than he had uh, before, when he, before he invaded. He, he was under the impression and the assumption 
that we would not do anything because he's done a lot of really terrible things before and we have done nothing. So he invaded Georgia and there were no sanctions. Uh, he invaded uh, and, and illegally seized Crimea and there were like totally nothing sanctions that didn't have any effect on him. Uh, he shot down a passenger plane full of innocent civilians, absolutely nothing. He, he provided or he, he used uh, chemical grade um, or, or I'm sorry, um, uh, military grade chemical weapons in uh, Salisbury, England, no sanctions. He had interfered in the U.S. election, no sanctions. He packed pipelines, no sanctions. So he, he's under the impression that like we, we were all so tiptoeing around him and appeasing him and so on that we would never have the guts to stand up to him and sanction things that, that he really cares about. And um, and so had we done that, it might have affected his calculus a lot differently. But now that he's crossed the Rubicon, now that he's invaded Ukraine, he's like a prison yard convict. He, he can never back down. The idea of backing down is totally anathema to him. He only has a forward gear, no reverse gear. And so from now on, he's, he's in this thing. So what's the purpose of sanctions? Again, not a deterrent. The purpose of sanctions at this point is to starve him dry of his financial resources. And in that respect, we have a lot more work to do. We have sanctioned about two thirds of his central bank money, which is good. And we have sanctioned 35 of 118 oligarchs, which is also good. So we've gone after a good portion of his savings. When I, when I say oligarch, sanctioned oligarchs, I assume that every dollar that an oligarch holds, 50 cents of that belongs to Putin. So we've gotten, we've gotten his savings, but we haven't touched his income. He gets a billion dollars a day from Germany and Italy and all these European countries that are buying his oil and gas. And he spends a billion dollars a day killing Ukrainians. And so as long as that money comes in from the oil and gas, he could carry on into perpetuity doing all this killing. And so we've got to dry up his income and freeze his assets. And then all of a sudden, he's not going to be able to do this. But that's not going to happen in two days or two weeks or two months. This is a long-term process. And we have to have the uh, perseverance to carry this through. Yeah, so I guess Europe or Germany probably famously tried to make the switch over to renewables. Maybe they switched a little too early, found out that they needed more energy and started getting that energy from Russia. Is that correct? Well, it's a little more sinister than that. Um, so, um, uh, <clears throat> I mean, they could have gotten natural gas from a variety of sources, but they had this really weird um almost corrupt relationship with Russia where they, I mean, it's not like they didn't know that all this dirty stuff was happening. They didn't, it's not like they didn't know that Russia um, was playing games, geopolitical games with natural gas. I mean, they, they were, the Germans um, knew that, that the Russians at any point could cut off the gas because they play, they had cut off gas to various country, countries at the end of their pipeline. And, and they also participated, the Germans actively participated in trying to squeeze out the Ukrainians. Um, I'm sure that some people listening to this will know the the pipeline Nord Stream 2. That's mm -hmm. this big German pipeline that was supposed to come online. Nord Stream 2, the purpose of it was to bypass Ukraine. So the Germans were basically working with the Russians to screw over the Ukrainians. I mean, it's as simple as that. Mm. And, um, and so it's sinister what the Germans were up to. This is not some like... Um, Oh, they're trying to be all nice and green and, and, you know, renewables and all that kind of stuff. And, and this was the best option. No, this was sinister stuff that they were up to. Is this Angela, Angela Merkel, if I'm saying her name right? Angela, Angela Merkel. She, she owns it all. Well, Angela Merkel and Gerhard Schroeder before her, um, who's, he, he's a right proper scumbag. Um, <laughs> he, he, the, the, literally the minute after he left the chancellor job, he went to work for Putin, earning like millions of euros a year. So, yeah, because the story you hear is, well, oh, she's this lady and she's running Germany and she wants to go green. So mm -hmm. God bless her. Mayo didn't work out, but uh, she her heart was in the right Noble place. Endeavor. But uh, although you could argue that she had to know this probably wasn't going to work out or should have known considering she's running the country. But then what is German's alliance with Russia? What What is going on? Well, Germany um, basically had this um, 
uh, uh, thing going where where there was a whole bunch of people uh, on the payroll in uh, on Putin's payroll, and they were all actively um, you know softening German policy and European policy towards Russia. I mean, you know, Russia did a lot of really terrible things, and. Germany was, uh, I, I would show up in Germany. I would argue for the Magnitsky Act in Germany. And it was like I walked in with a big turd on my forehead. Um, they, they, they hated me there. Um, in fact, I'll tell you something interesting. Um, my book, my new book, Freezing Order, which is, um, which is going to be published in 18 countries, number one New York Times bestseller, number one in Canada, number one in Ireland, number one in Australia. Um, I can't even find a German publisher for my book. They they they, they don't oh, want to know. They don't want to touch you. They don't want to smuggle know. it in. Right. Wow. Yeah, like the French resistance. See, they this don't want to know. So, I mean, I, I hate that this is our world, but it's just money. It's just, it's money. It's Putin. It's it's Power. he spreads it around and buys everybody, and then all of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense and doesn't is not good for the people, sort of thing. And why would it be? Is Putin, there's theories about him maybe being sick or having some terminal disease that was floated around or that, uh, you know, syphilis is eating his brain. And then there's nukes, then there's tactical nukes. Uh, mm. What are your thoughts on that stuff? Well, I, I've heard rumors from highly confident sources as long as 10 years ago that Putin's going to die any minute now. Yeah, he's got terminal cancer. I mean, I can even like, if you just search on Google, Putin cancer, you can find articles going back 10 years and, and like really, you know, from, from like credible news sources. I, I wouldn't, you know, my prediction is we'll be five years from today and we could have the same conversation about Putin who's sitting there having caused even more terrible trouble from between now and five years from now. I, I, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I have no, um, you know, inside knowledge of his medical condition. And of course he looks like hell, but you know, I mean, people, he's not, he's not the youngest guy in the world. He's 69 years old. Maybe his plastic surgery is starting to sag. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't even know he was in his sixties. Really? I, he's I, pulled pretty tight. First off, he's, he's been, I feel like he's been in power my adult life. Like I felt like 70 at least. I mean, you know. Oh, I see. You thought he was older. Yeah. I thought okay, he was, yeah, 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 I thought, I, I thought he was 74 or something. You were, you were, you were younger. You weren't impressed by his shirtless horseback riding? <laughs> yeah, but that was a few years back. Did, um, well, it's going to be 70 in October. Is, is, um, sorry, Putin. Okay, so we talk about. But, but I, I, I didn't answer your question about the nukes. And let, let me just talk about that yes. for a second because I think it's important. So, the, the, um, so first of all, Putin is not out of his mind. I mean, Putin is a psychopath. He's always been a psychopath. He has no empathy. He has no conscience. He has no respect for human life. Um, he's always been like that. He's no different now. He, 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 whatever he's doing now is just, uh, he's responding to the circumstances around him. Um, but he's not illogical um, and he's not irrational. He does what's, what he can get away with doing. Um, and he is, a, he is just a thug. He goes around thumping his chest, making threats. And for the longest time, everybody scurried and, and ran for cover and tried to just hide from him, hoping that maybe the threat would go away. That was his whole thing. And for 22 years, he was very successful at that because everyone said, oh, my God, we don't want to piss this guy off. He's going to nuke us if we do. And, um, and now all of a sudden, um, you know, he's invaded Ukraine and we've decided that we're going to piss him off. And we, <clears throat> we have supplied weapons to Ukraine in large amounts. And we've sanctioned him more than any country has ever been sanctioned in the world. And you know, what's, what, what is his reaction to that? He, he's not like, he, he can't do anything. He, there's no symmetrical reaction to that. And then, so everyone said, well, okay, but he's going to nuke us. We, we better be nice to him. Well, okay, if he nukes us, we'll nuke him. And, and that, then the whole world will go up in flames. And he's not so irrational. He's going to do that. I just, there, there is a, a term for that, mutually assured destruction. That's what's kept us from nuking them and having them nuke us for the last 80 years. I don't think he's, he under, I don't think he's misunderstood that. So I, I don't believe there's going to be a nuclear war with him over any of this stuff. And yeah. then, then the question is, will he use a tactical nuclear weapon in, in Ukraine? <clears throat> and the answer is he would if there was some uh, compelling, um, helpful reason for him to do that. But what, what, what would he achieve by killing a million or two million people in Kiev? Um, what does that do? Does he, does he get Ukraine after that? I, I, I don't know. I think probably um, 
he ends up with like the entire United Nations then turning, finally turning against him and even China voting against him uh, at the United Nations when we kick kicking Russia out of the United Nations and a full lockdown of the whole world. I, I mean, you know, I, I just don't see that, that, um, that scenario happening. And, and besides the, um, uh, nuclear fallout would come over Moscow probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I, I mean, if, if there was a, a real tactical advantage, if he, if he ended up like winning the war by that, may, maybe, maybe he does it, but I think he ends up just getting himself into more of a mess. Now it doesn't mean that, that, um, that he, he doesn't escalate. I mean, he's going to escalate like crazy, but, um, I think at the moment, um, you know, the, 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 his bark is, is much worse than his bite, you know, like, uh, Sweden and Finland just joined NATO. He said, oh my God, we're going to go after you if you do that. And what does he do? He, he's not going after them. Um, you know, they're, they're now members of NATO or will be momentarily. Um, and he doesn't want to have a war with NATO. He can't even win a war with Ukraine. How's he going to win a war with NATO? What about his successor? And I'm sure there's not a guy waiting in a bullpen, but you know, we hear talk, even our president, we, he sort of walked it back, but we're like, we got to take this guy out. Someone's got to take this guy out. You'll hear, you'll hear talk about take Putin out. I think Lindsey Graham like explicitly said, yeah, yeah Lindsey Graham said it, Biden said it, but I think maybe Biden just misspoke, but there's a lot of, we got to take him out. Uh, then it, oh, by, by the way, Biden, Biden didn't misspeak. He, he didn't misspeak. He, he was, he, that, that, that was, that was a prepared remark. And, oh, okay. and all I'm, the, uh, all bets are off with Biden yeah. because I never know if it's like something on the prompter or something no, he's no, just kind of no, spitting no. out. That's not, that's not something you misspeak about. That, that, that's the kind of thing you prepare a remark about. And then, you know, and to keep them guessing you. Well, you hold have, on. You it's not something you misspeak well, about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Biden. I really I'm, I'm confused sometimes. But all right. If he gets taken out, are we going to is his replacement going to be worse than him? Or is there some road to be- some? Well, no one could be worse, anyone, but are we going to be worse than him? Are they going to pull you, from you, the same into, pull, you, pool? Like you've bought into his, you've, you've bought into his, his spin. Like, I oh have my God, if I'm not there, that, that, no, there, there's nobody worse than him. He's the worst guy on the planet. I mean, uh, you know, with the exception of maybe Stalin and Hitler, he's, he's that, that guy, no one's worse than him. Um, and, and by the way, there, there is no, nobody waiting in the wings because if there was that, right. that person would have already taken him out. Right. Um, so, so he, he, and he's going to, for, for what, for all, for what it's worth, you know, all bets are that he'll be around five and 10 years from now and we'll still be talking about him. Would we go, let's just say he was taken out. Um, where would Russia change? Would we, it would be the wicked witch got a bucket of water dumped on her and now we can all rejoice with the flying monkeys or would they just keep going down this road in your estimation? Well, it all depends on how he gets taken out. If he gets taken out by the, you know, head of the KGB, or they call it the FSB now, and some new, you know, um, pol- secret policeman takes over, it'd be more of the same. If he gets taken out because the people rise up across the country and they storm the Kremlin and hang him from a tank, then maybe Alexei Navalny becomes the president huh. and we have a new relationship. And that, that you know, it all depends. Um. Gina, you had a question? Yeah, um, just because there hasn't been enough doom and gloom, I would love for you to uh, share your thoughts on um, Amer- how this affects uh, American politicians. And if we're completely, if there's a force field around, you know, this country that we can't be penetrated by the thoughts of, you know, any nefarious Russian doings or not. Well, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't have to, he doesn't even have to devote any, any, um, time from the St. Petersburg troll factory this time around <laughs> for one simple reason. He's pushed up the price of food, of, of heat, of gasoline to a level where that's going to do all the work for him. You're going to have all sorts of trouble um, uh, that's going to cause all sorts of populism and all sorts of it crazies has. are going to come out because of that. And not just the United States, all over the world. And, and, the, and the, actually, the, the frailer the country the more likely you're going to have populist governments taking over. And I predict that like 20 countries in the world will have like coups as a result of Jesus. this uh, uh, horrible um, standard of living destruction where, you know, some people in some countries are going to be slipping below the poverty line and, and subsistence level because they just can't afford to eat. That's yeah. what create, causes revolutions. And that's been uh, like, you know, much better than any troll factories in terms of like you know, tra- creating chaos in the world. So this is more of a macro thing as opposed to micro going after a certain person, a certain politician, a certain this, a certain that. 
Um, he's totally weaponized um, every. He's, he's weaponized. Um, you know, he, he he. This is now total. You know, shotgun in every direction. Right. He, he. You know, he doesn't even know where it's going to hit now. But he's had that that impact. I mean, uh, and and the only thing that might stop this is that China is, is in the process of imploding because of their shutdowns and their real estate market and all this kind of stuff. And if if China really goes down the tubes economically, then then maybe oil prices start to decrease and all that kind of stuff starts to level off, even with Putin doing what he's doing. You know, the, the thing about all this stuff is, is it's not like one person controls everything. There's, there's a dynamic situation with a lot of different things going on in a lot of different places. Last question for you, Bill. Um, is he the world's richest man, Putin? Or is there yep. any way to calculate yeah. that? Yeah, no, he's, he's definitely the world's richest man. So, um, I, I estimate that that between 2000, when he came to power, and 2022, where we are right now, he and a thousand people around him have stolen a trillion dollars from the Russian state. That's a thousand billion dollars. Um, he's probably worth like well north of 200 billion dollars. He's definitely richer than Elon Musk. Um, but it's, you should understand that it's, this is not richness that he needs because he's been like eyeing up, you know, private jets in his spare time in the magazines. This is richness because. In Russia, you can't be the richest, you can't be the most powerful person unless you're the richest person and the most brutal person. And so this is all part of his power trip, all part of staying in power, and all part of projecting that he's just the, the meanest, most powerful, wealthiest guy in the world. Well, the name of the book is Freezing Order, a true story of money laundering, murder, and surviving Vladimir Putin's wrath. Bill, we wish you all the safety and success in the world and, and hope you can come by and check in with us periodically on this super sad but compelling subject. Mm -hmm. Bill Browder, thank you very much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. All right, let me hit a spot here that is DR Power Equipment, spending more time at home. Step up your property care. Tackle all your landscaping projects projects, I should say, with DR Power Equipment. Go to drpowerequipment.com, your one-stop shop for uh, brush, mowers, chipper shredders, leaf and lawn vacs, uh, wood splitters, rototillers, and much, much more. And you can check out DR Power's full line of professional-grade gas-powered equipment, plus the latest lithium-ion battery-powered tools. These things work. We didn't have the battery technology a few years back to pull this off, but now we do, and DR Power is leading the way. Clear field of overgrowth brush, uh, including four-foot-high fields of grass and saplings up to three inches thick, or trim, mow, and edge your suburban lawn like a pro. Take care of your lot like a pro. All DR equipment's on sale right now at GoDRPower.com. Stock up. For your outdoor season and get professional power done right drpower.com go drpower.com all right we'll take a quick break french stewart is going to join us soon we'll back with a few and then we'll bring french in right after this and now alcoa presents definitely not a jew on the adam carolla show Dateline, Pisca, Iowa. A 29-year-old man was sentenced to life in prison after running over a friend repeatedly with a pickup truck outside of a bar after a fight about mayonnaise. Definitely not a Jew. Well, somebody tweeted me, and we were playing that uh, Jim Neighbors Golly theme mm -hmm, song, mm -hmm. and then I said uh, him singing National Anthem, but I forgot. The National Anthem is not his song. We, oh. I need to hear the Golly song first, just to set set the table. But um, Adjust your palate. He, mm -hmm. uh, his song that he would sing at the Indy 500 is back home in Indiana. So the oh. guy we heard was not him. No, no. That was him. It was him. But that's not his general. His, that's not he the hit sings he pulls back out. home in Indiana I before so the Indianapolis good. 500. But we need the golly first, Shalom. Chris. Died in Hawaii. Oh. Fun fact. 
Hey, I, I, I think you've had a good life if you die in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I mean, in, you make it into your 80s. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. just die in Hawaii. Absolutely. And that's Gross. where uh, Jim Neighbor passes. I was looking this song up. All right. Uh, I was asking Max Pat about this uh, Trump clip because uh, Germany reminded me of it. I don't know if he's able to. We, yeah, find we, it we yet. got it. It, this is, uh, okay, it's loaded. Here we go. This is. <laughs> So this is Trump. I think he's speaking to Germany. I don't know what year, but it couldn't have been that long ago. And he's pissed that they're getting their gas from Russia. But Germany is totally controlled by Russia because they were getting from 60 to 70 percent of their energy from Russia and a new pipeline. And you tell me if that's appropriate, because I think it's not. And I think it's a very bad thing for NATO. NATO is an alliance of 29 nations, and uh, there are uh, sometimes differences and uh, different views and also some disagreements. And the uh, gas uh, uh, pipeline from Russia to uh, Germany is one issue where allies uh, disagree. But the strength of NATO is that despite these differences, we have always been able to unite around our core task uh, to protect and defend each other because we understand that we are stronger together than uh, apart. Mm. But Germany, as far as I'm concerned, is captive to Russia because it's getting so much of its energy from Russia. Mm. So we're supposed to protect Germany, but they're getting their energy from Russia. Explain that. And it can't be explained. You know that. All right. I know everyone hates Trump, but he was he was nuts and bolts on a lot of basic shit. Like so you're, sure. you're getting all your energy from this, this des- despot nation uh, and you want us to foot the bill for your protection? Yes. Uh, explain it. You explain can. it. <laughs> and I love, and, and with good reason, he was right to do this while the dude was attempting to explain it. Trump was thinking about, I mean, his eyes were darting all over. He was probably playing a song in his head because he knew whatever explanation that dude was going to give him, it wasn't going to be a good one. I know. I do love when people go, explain it. You can't. Mm-hmm. That was great. <laughs> uh, that was NATO. You want to sit through that again. That was Brussels, NATO, 2018. So anyway, oh. ugh, I didn't know that thing. I didn't know the nefarious part about Germany. Oh, I, I, I thought that everything was just the story is they just wanted to go greener, but it's never quite that simple. green, yeah. if you will. And anything that has to do with fuel, I just feel like is some bad. I, I, I don't know. We decided that the worst people in the world had to produce the most fuel <laughs> and that the, and that semi-logical nice nations would need to then buy their fuel Please, from them sir. and rely on them. Yep. I mean, Jesus, I remember the whole OPEC embargo and odd, even odd uh, license plate, gas oh, rationing. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was a whole <laughs> thing. I lived through that. Lines going out the gas station and down the street. Oi. I only really know about that because of Licorice Pizza. <laughs> they, oh. It's very illustrated the, in the movie. You would know, but the van stalls out in the middle of the road. And they, well, you, I could there's a see line. that. I could see it. Okay. Couldn't I see the gas line? That's a good, yeah, that's a good point. Mike didn't have the sound <laughs> didn't have to up. be explained. <laughs> what now? He didn't have to sound up and announce it was the most boring movie ever. It was nominated for best screenplay. <laughs> and you guys watched it without sound. There's people sitting around talking with nothing coming out of their mouth. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have sound. I Mike. like the questioning. <laughs> well, what now? What's fun- going- <laughs> I don't even know what's going what on. They didn't have anything interesting to say. Yeah, but to be fair to Mike, he's like, these people aren't good looking. <laughs> It's like, well, that, that's true. Yeah. That doesn't have much to do with the sound. We have, uh, we have, oh, so something reminded me. I was talking to uh, Dr. Drew. We're reminiscing about the time I saw the gayest man in the world on TV. We're on the road in Wisconsin. And I was in my room. I think it was before show we're doing. It's like six o'clock. I had the, had the, the, the TV on. Sure. And the gayest man in the world showed up on TV and I ran. So it must've been, we didn't have cell phones. I ran down the hall, went to Drew's room, started pounding on his door. I was in my towel. I got him out of his room and told him to run into my room. Ironically, this is all very gay. Yeah, Yeah. I know. I'm in my towel. He's following me into the room and we had to watch the gayest man in the world on TV. And that man's name is Christopher Lowell. And, we have the clip. We have the opening, right? But we also have that cold open. Yeah, okay. This is, is this is him. He's, he's, the, this. he's the second funniest man on the planet, but he may be the... This is a cold open to his show. Well, hello there, Pilgrim. Being a cowboy, the art of restraint is an important I think one. you got to turn it down a As little. As a rodeo man, I have to wrestle, restrain, and hogtie that cats. 
As a sheriff, I have to restrain and tie up the bad guys before they restrain and tie me up. Do you ever wonder if decorating ideas may be a little over the top? Well, sometimes less is more. Today, we'll show you the art of restraint on The Christopher Lowell Show. Chasing bad guys is easy, but babysitting can be hazardous to your health. Is this John Wayne thing? At a network. What is this? Yeah, that syndicated show. The mic's packed. The mic's packed. Yes. This how is... how 90s a montage opening is oh, this? Oh, wow. Just yeah, watching. Yeah. Scented candles, a, a vignette screen. You forget how far away the 90s were from the, everything just dissolved. Everything was a montage. Everything was saxophone led. Where did this air? He had Public a. Public Access, Wisconsin. He had a TV show, a home <laughs> improvement designing TV show. And then he had a talk Hello, show. Hello, everybody. I'm Christopher Lowell. Oh, more. Oh, I need more. A little bit more. What are you doing? A little more. More tail. Anyway. That's what he said. <laughs> he, yeah. He then went on to do like a, a, a daytime talk show, I think, with Christopher Lowell. Or Chris I, Chris. Yeah, so I feel like this is something I should know. The, uh, so he had his first show, Interior Motives, was 97. Awesome. That's a good name, actually. And then the Christopher Lowell show is 99 to 03. Is it an HGTV thing? No, I don't. Yeah, well, where? We'll find, maybe it was syndicated. I don't know where where it ended I up. I'm not aware of Christopher Lowell. Can we please have oh. him on? If you say he's dead, I'll cry. No, he's still alive. Oh, good. We checked. AIDS didn't get him? No. Brian, please. Oh, happy. Yeah. All right. Sorry, we'll play a little clip of him. To bring you what we think are the most current items, clever projects, and forecasts of what we hope are the trends to come. Now, as you may have noticed over the last six years, all of our shows have been themed shows. Ah, with the exception of a few that we like to call mm, potpourri. <laughs> yes, they're demos, products, and guests that don't necessarily fit into a theme, but we felt were absolutely worth your while. This is Join a straight man. Join us today for our version of He's Open Mike Doing Friday. stick. Who knew? Now, for those of you who love French prevention but can't afford the antique price tag, I'm raising my hand. Proceed. <laughs> we're about to meet a lady who will show us how French provincial reproductions can be the answer. Oh. Joining us now is interior designer representing the Louis Collection. Please welcome Christine Meisenberg. Hi, Christine. How are you? Oh, very well. All right. So I anyway, I love him. I went running down the hall. He's a I was patron like, saint. <laughs> Drew, I found the gayest man on the planet. <laughs> you got to come into my amazing. room. I was like, I don't know so what channel it's on. Entries. I don't want to take time with your hotel yeah. TV skimming through no. whatever. The no Marriott time. channel where they're offering, you know, I got to see Mario Lopez pushing a movie. That's I right. don't have time for that. You run to my room and we'll watch it on my TV set. And that's when I discovered Christopher Lowell. And then later on, as, as we were watching that so 90s montage yeah, of yeah, the yeah, fades yeah. and the It looked like an SNL peak, sketch. Peak. I started. It's the interest of Smalley. I yes. had yes, I had this thought where I was like, it was on the Discovery Channel. So says Chris. It's talk show as well, hmm? and I so I had this fleeting memory of we did a man show, an entire show dedicated to the woman show. We mm -hmm. we flipped the script. Mm -hmm. We didn't do the man show. We did the woman show, and the studio audience was pissed. <laughs> they didn't like me and Jimmy and Danny were like, this is going to be fucking funny. Yeah. We'll do a whole. That's where I did um, Boys Gone Wild. Yeah. The, the TV commercials. Sure. All, it was all just flip the script. 100 percent. We're doing a woman's show. But of course, the guys who were tailgating. Drink a Sierra Nevada. Yeah. Right. Okay. And the chuggies were wearing like sweatpants and T-shirts. And that's the equivalent to going to the Queen Mary for a bachelor party. Yes. To the drag they show. were pissed. Yeah. But. I then I thought we did a kind of montagey opening, so I'll I'll play you the uh, opening to the woman show man show episode, which pissed off the audience. <laughs> you want a daytime Emmy for a very special episode of the man show. I've always dreamt of doing a show with my best friend Jimmy. Eat a pint of Hagen Dazs. Then complain about weight loss It's the woman show oh, oh, oh. Spin this paycheck on a dress Blame it on the PMAs It's the woman show The little theme is wonderful It's a place <laughs> where we can cramp together <laughs> Stripper Shoes that you don't need. Clock is 
taking time to breathe. It's the woman show. The graphic of the outline. <laughs> the juggies are in their house and coats. Now the host of the woman show, Adam Carolla and Jimmy. Oh, we had ladies in the audience. Oh, That's fucking right. Oprah-esque. People hated it at home. But the audience was all, we got all chicks. <laughs> Lingerie. They were probably so confused. This is a new, great new show. Thank you. Hello, talented women whose figures I'd kill for. Hello, alcoholic for whom I pray every night. Okay, that top is so cute on you, Jimmy. Oh, thank you. I like the I like the vertical stripes because they're swimming. Jimmy, you are not fat. You are so not fat. Oh. Is she so not fat? She's so not fat. This is your finest act. Yeah, this is by really far. Yes, I am. But you're sweet to say it. Put thank this all your real. Okay, man. ladies, can we chat for a minute? Today we want to talk about men. <laughs> the knowing look. Uh-huh. The knowing judging they look. They know it all. They're experts in every field. Oh, Politics, yeah. the stock market, cars. Mm. Oh, they know everything about cars. They know all the little parts. Big whoop. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, newsflash. Maybe you haven't heard about it with all that hair in your ears, but there's something new. It's called a mechanic. Use it. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is your heavy moment. Money. Oh, men have to control the money. Don't spend. Don't spend. Why do you need a new dress? Why can't you do your own nails? Hey, guys, you work hard for your money. Someone should enjoy it, right? <laughs> Am I right? We're going to watch the whole show now. I haven't seen this <laughs> in 20 years. Chat. And they are so emotional. They get so upset when you use their razor on your leg. <laughs> I cut my face, my beautiful face. Sure. He can use his wife's body like a pommel horse. But if she can't use his lousy bick even once without him having a coronary. Uh -huh. Shaving. Don't you hate the little hairs all over the sink? All over the sink? Uh -huh. how, how about all over the place? Can we talk? <laughs> my God. I can realize I had this a is And the smells that come out of them. They have no shame. They don't even close the bathroom door. <laughs> hey, guys. Newsflash, when I want to live in a barn, I'll marry a goat. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. pause. Pause real quick. How many hours in the makeup chair did you have to spend just wrangling that hair? Yeah, that side into part. A, into a nice part. I don't know what that had to do with the woman show, but I decided I need to change up my look. You did great. I'm also crossing my legs in a way I've never crossed I've my never legs. I've never seen Never. Like that, and it's not like you're portraying like gay men. You are channeling woman energy. I totally forgot that we filled. I, we were so nuts. We were just like, we're doing the woman show. This is show. an inspired episode. Yeah, I need uh, a little more. A nice right. little touch was uh, in the opening as, you, as it panned across the audience. There, the cue card just said, remember your spirit. <laughs> oh, I saw that. That's was good. <laughs> All right, play a little more. This is making me laugh. Here's another thing about guys. When their butt's on the couch in front of the TV, where's their hand, girls? Where's in the pants! That's right. Down the pants. They got the remote in one hand and Mr. Happy in the other. It is disgusting. If you want to itch down there, I've got two words for you, fellas. Badger sill. I tell you. Can we chat? You are in character and you're locked in. Man, can't live with them, can't get a credit card without them. <laughs> okay, so... How's the baby? Oh, he is, he is beautiful. Matter of fact, I brought him to work today, and he is buzzing around here. <laughs> oh. we, had a, we had a fat intern who oh. made baby noises, yeah. so we decided to bring him out. He is precious. Is he gonna be, is he gonna be okay wandering around the studio? Oh, he'll be fine. He's playing with his balloon, and, um, oh, he'll be fine. It's makeover time now, ladies. Yeah, he'll be fine. Who wants, who wants to be made, to be made over? over? Who's the candidate for me? You? You're up. Come on up. Oh. Come 
on up here. This is okay. season one? Well, no okay, way. there's plenty to work with. Yeah, wow. we have a real clean uh, canvas Palette. to work Palette. from. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, what's your name? My name's Emily. Emily, and have you ever had a makeover? Never. You never have. She's never had a makeover. Oh <laughs> <laughs> we got a plot Look at her pleated pants. <laughs> All right. Jesus. Jesus. We did. There was also the home deck. There was the home decor section of this thing, too. That's what got me to Christopher Lowell. I was watching Christopher Lowell. I was like, I know we did some version of this on the man show. Jesus Christ. That was season one. I would have thought for sure that was season three or four because okay. I thought we wouldn't want to fuck around with the format no, too much in, in season one. But uh, playing with house money at that point, we did fuck around with uh, the format. Who's that? We brought a woman in to do some home home decor. <laughs> home decor Is she segment. in on the joke? I don't know. I never could figure it out. We'll play a couple seconds of it. How are you today, Connie? I'm just super, thank you. That is wonderful. And how's Brittany and Brandon? Oh, Brittany's wonderful, thank you. And little Brandon has just started cutting his baby teeth, so... Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> My berry just went through that. It's a, it's hard. It's a lot of sleepless nights. Oh, yeah. tell me about it. My head hasn't touched a pillow since the Beatles broke up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> not know how you do it, Connie. Oh. I need roller skates to keep up with oh. you. <laughs> What do you have for us today? Well, all first right. of all, it's <laughs> We've fun. seen enough. Yeah, watch that episode of so, The Woman Show. Wow. And yeah. it just it, deluged with hate mail. Yeah, I, I forgot that we swapped the audience out. It was more the man on the street that uh, didn't enjoy it. But uh, yeah, we were like, we've done 14 <laughs> regular episodes. Let's uh, Let's swap it up. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, we dove into it. All right. Committed to the best. Yeah. Yeah. French Stewart. Yes. Miss him. Back by popular demand is uh, waiting out in the wings. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll bring French in here right after this. The Adam Carolla Show presents French Stewart's birthday cocktail party for February 20th. Let's see who's here. Let's welcome the evening's photographer, Ansel Adams. Screenwriter, producer, and director, Robert Altman. Guess who's coming to the party? Sidney Poitier just showed up. American auto racer, Bobby Unser. We welcome U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell. Actress Sandy Duncan is here. Let's welcome rock guitarist and the namesake of the Jay Giles Band, John Giles. Donald Trump's ex-wife, Ivana Trump, is here. Half of Steely Dan just showed up. Walter Becker is at the party. From the band Spirit, the guy who sued Led Zeppelin, Randy California. Charles Barkley is here. So is Cindy Crawford. Kurt Cobain is with us. Trevor Noah's here. So is Rihanna. And Patty Hearst is being held hostage. French Stewart on the Adam Carolla Show. Wow, that is... Uh, That's um, the list amongst the most eclectic birthday party. We do a lot of people. And there's a lot of guests, but that that that's, may be the best. That's how you know that horoscopes are just bullshit. <laughs> yes. Like none of those people make sense with each other. You're right. But they're the most. It's definitely the most impressive list we've heard. It's pretty good. It's really good. Uh, French is really just backed by popular demand. Everyone loved his Aww. appearance on this show. God, five years ago now. Or right, right, coming up on the anniversary, June sixth. I believe Good I'm Lord. reading here. I know too long. So ever the fans are just like, bring French back. But he's got an animated series he's working on as well, which is um, a Mike Judge series for Netflix. Mike Judge yeah. is so goddamn good. Yeah, it's called Exploding Kittens, and that's you're doing VO work on that, right? That's right. Yeah. When is that? do to hit Netflix? I don't know. They're still making it. We just started it, but it's really fun. You know, it's just going in and just sitting around with some dudes and saying, okay, I'll give you like some of your writing and then you'll give me like a couple of just go crazies. Mm, all right. And so, so it's just fun. It just, yeah. like, but they're lovely, you know, so I don't know when it's coming out. I don't know what the deal is with it, but we're just doing it right now. Mike Judge is a very interesting guy. He's yeah. kind of a quiet, low-key guy, but he's a quiet, low-key genius. Yeah, he really is. Yes. Well, I had, I'd run into him uh, years ago because uh, we're both from Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. And we're both about, 
like roughly the same age. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I think we're roughly the same age. Yeah, I'm, you're 58. I'll turn 58 in a week. Or oh, something. okay. Well, then learn from 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 me and from my time, my five months that I, <laughs> yeah, I've, <you're... laughs> I've got on you. Yeah, Just, you know, I, I can tell you some things. You come down from the mountain, Elder. <laughs> and open your tablet and share your yeah. wisdom. Oh, you don't want my tablet open? <laughs> oh no. Yeah. No. No, but he's great. Like they're just, uh, it's just fun to do that too. Cause it just, it, it doesn't feel important. It just feels like having a really good time. You, uh, mm. everyone loves your story. Everyone loves your lunatic dad. Oh yeah. I think about your dad and crazy and, uh, shiftless and, uh, and, and a thief, but I, I, yes. I, I uh, once every other week, I think about the scam where he rents the car, pulls the tires off and puts it back on the, the car you have to rent the same model car you, you have but you get a new set of rubber right and because they they only check the paint <laughs> right and there's a part of me that admires him yeah no no it, it really it, it but, is so here's the thing about your dad maybe my dad as well <clears throat> if, if if that just lived in the bubble like the only thing he ever did <laughs> right that was sort of dubious was rented a 74 Mustang and swapped out the tires and rims and nothing else. Yes. You'd go, that's kind of interesting. And that was kind of smart. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that represents an entire lifestyle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that's, that's correct. That's the problem with having that guy as your dad. Yes, it's not that, just the tires. Yeah. And that, and that's, and that's the problem is that, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, I, I'm an old dad now. Cause like my daughter's eight. I had her when I like, you know, when I was 50. No. I had one sperm left. Yeah, you know, like his dog paddled his way to victory. Right. But now I'm old dad. Right. And so I find myself saying things like, oh, walk it off. Right. Rub or some dirt like, on it. Yeah, yeah. Put some dirt on it or right. walk it off. Or like, you, you don't want to be the drunk girl crying at the party. Let's get it together. Right. right. You know, but. But I start to hear my dad in it, and then she, like, right now she's working on this uh, a diary. It's a fictional diary of life on the Oregon Trail. Oh. Your daughter. And, yeah. And so she's writing this diary for school, and it's, it, it, it's a fastball down the middle. It's like she's like, we were hungry, we are tired, we broke a wagon wheel. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, you know what else happened? Some cannibalism. All right. <laughs> you might want to like spice this story Tom's up. Got yeah, right. Right. Into it. right? You know, and she's like, Well, people died from bad water. And I'm like, Yeah, but they also died from a bear attack. All right. Why don't we get a bear attack and then some cannibalism? And so I'm trying to like get her to do it. And then finally she says, uh, Okay, well, we can kill somebody, but who do we kill? Little Timmy? And I said, No, no, you got eight family members. Like, you're not going to be able to feed them. All right. We need somebody kill. bigger. We yeah. need, a, we need an uncle. Yeah, Tommy. yeah we need Succulent. an uncle. Fat Uncle Tommy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I said, You have an uncle? And, yeah. And then she said, Yes. And I said, Well, what's his name? And she says, Uncle Buck. Oh, oh yeah, John. And Candy. so now all I can yeah. think about is that, you know, he's died of exposure and they're defrosting. <laughs> John Candy for like right. a, a month before they can even eat him. Yeah. But then like the teacher put the kibosh on it because she was like, I don't, I don't know if we want to go down this. Mm. Oh, so what you're saying, <clears throat> teachers, you don't want it to be historically <clears throat> accurate. That's right. That's, That's right. right. You're a liar. Yeah. You're a liar. And Sugarcoat the past. Yeah. And the, the uh, pandemic made you lazy. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm I think. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure, that sounded random, but that was a drop from Uncle Buck. Wow. <laughs> I saw him have a drop from Uncle Buck. Third, uh, uh, going back, I mean, everyone knows you from Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah. And then uh, I know, and it was a funny series, and it ran for, God, it's like five successful seasons, I'm guessing. Is uh, John Lithgow starting that as well, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know anything about John Lithgow other than he plays a lot of different types. Yeah. He's very good at sliding in and out of out of roles. Anyone well, who quite a crazy him, range. Oh yeah. my yeah. god. Watch yeah. Cliffhanger. He's like the greatest heavy in the world on Cliffhanger. Yeah. Wasn't he a serial killer in uh, Dexter? Yeah, Dexter. The right? most right. frightening season of that show is because of him. So he's super yeah. talented, but I don't really know the guy at all. Oh, uh, he's 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 frustratingly gifted. Mm -hmm. Like he he went to Harvard. He was a Fulbright scholar. He can play like all these instruments. He can rip on a banjo. He uh, he speaks other languages. At one point, we had this scene where he was supposed to be writing calculus on a on a 
you know, bored and they come in and they, they're supposed to tell them how to do it. And they're like, now that, that looks like it. <laughs> and at first you're like, oh, it's amazing. And he's the nicest person in the world. But after a while, you kind of start to hate him. Sure. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just yeah. a little bit. Because Present. it's too much. It's too much yeah. for It comes too yeah. easily. It comes too easily, and it's too beautiful, and it's too good. And you're just like, well, why can't I be that? What it, like, yeah. 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 It, you know, I only see him get mad one time, and it's not that big of a deal. And so it just uh, – there's a part of me that loves him deeply and the part of me that's resentful. You're the Salieri in this case. I'm mm-hmm. the Salieri. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the Mozart and I'm the Salieri. Right. Whoever cast that show knocked out of the park with just the talent packed in. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yeah. you, uh, Lithgow. Yeah, they're all right. Oh, Joseph Brindy. Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah, we, we, we all had like a reunion about a, a month or so ago and it was just the same thing. You just drop in, everybody's lovely. You know, and not all shows are like that. Like right. sometimes you got a butthole. Mm-hmm. Well, how many child stars go on to any number of you know failures or addictions or whatever? And yeah, Joe yeah, Gordon that, killing it. Yeah, he's the one who would be most likely as the child star to be the butthole. <laughs> right, that's right. And it didn't happen. What the reunion was like a cast and crew thing, or was it a little more casual? No, it was like a, a thing we did. Uh, they they had us over at the Roosevelt, and we all came out, and they did it for the internet and for Vulture, and we just all got together and we answered a bunch of questions, and uh, and then we just had some drinks and hung out. Wow! So the whole cast, and who was yeah. the woman? Oh, Kristen Johnson. Johnson. That's right. God, yeah. yeah. Who did. played a fascinating character on the show? <laughs> yeah, because she was playing a female human. Yeah, she was supposed to be Harrison Ford in a dress, <laughs> and she she lost. Uh, she she didn't like. She lost the coin toss, so she had like Harrison Ford had to be the woman. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, God, I, I totally forgot about the rest of the cast and how, how talented that group is. Yeah, Lithgow just sort of seems like a genius, and I don't know I how you can is. tell that from watching a guy act in roles. But it's the that's, Mid-Atlantic I accent. I think he is. Yes, is yeah, that what it, it is? Mid-Atlantic standard. Right. No. So no. when uh, you got on to that, you'd been doing roles and movies and things like that before that, but yeah. this was kind of the first big one, right? Yeah, this is the first time where, uh, you know, it wasn't just a, a, a pilot that I killed mm-hmm. or, you know, <laughs> like, like it was the first one that sort of went on. But uh, but was, I just remember it like being just the most fun you could have and you're making money and mm. you can't believe that you're making money. Was it, um, is it syndicated now? Is yeah. It, was it pop? Where is it? It's everywhere. I don't even know where it is anymore. I do can't you, keep track of it because I've got old man disease. Do you get to wet your beak? I mean, are you financially Is the mailman set? your boss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, it's lovely. I'm, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've had a nice life. I, I, I just have, you know, and I, I worked hard for it and I know that, but also so much of it is just you get lucky. You, know, mm-hmm. you kind of get lucky at the right time, and some people don't. And it's been lovely. You know, Who but, named you French? Oh, I'm Milton French Stewart the Fourth. Wow. wow. Shit. Yeah, the first Milton <clears throat> French Stewart killed. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, he killed a guy on a bridge in Virginia, oh. and then ran into the woods. Wow. <laughs> and then the second Milton French, Milton French Junior. He uh, was a boxer that was inappropriate with children. Oh, boy. Mm. My dad, con man, <laughs> it took f- like four <laughs> Milton French Stewarts to get the fucking actor. Yeah, like yeah. just actor. Like, you know, to get to, Not to, get to ambassador. Ins- yeah, <laughs> Inspector Gadget, right. too. But I, don't, like, I, I have zero idea how this went down and why everybody was just so committed to this whole thing. When, when my daughter was born, I was praying it wouldn't be a boy because I was like, oh, I'd have to do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're locked in. Milton mm-hmm. French Stewart the Five. Yeah. yeah. Like, you'd have to do it. Well, you kind of usually when the second is, you know, a, a criminal or unsuccessful, it slows the roll down a little bit, but not it with didn't. the Stewart family. You guys no, down. they leaned into yeah. it. Yeah. Damn, I met him. Yeah, mm. punching down. Did, punching all, down did they all go by French or did most of them go with the Milton? I think they all but went wow. with French. Everybody pretty much discarded the Milton. Mm. Yeah. The Milton's a hard. Beats. An easy yeah. name to leave. So yeah, really. Mike Judge. Mike Judge, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Office space. My, well, my, my, uh, my wife sometimes, like, uh, whenever I'm, like, doing a, a shady U-turn or something, 
she says, oh, someone's pulling a Milton. Oh, right. And so now Milton is sort of my alter ego. That's your right. Jekyll and Hyde. Yes, yeah, right. my Jekyll and Hyde. It's when something's really going bad, like pulling a Milton. Or else like, oh, well, that was Milton-esque. Speaking of driving, I, <clears throat> I have this vague recollection of last time we were in here. We were talking about taking a dump into an In-N-Out burger bag yes, or something. Yes, yes, yes. My, my, uh, my wife said, hey, try not to... Uh, like, it was delightful, but try not to revisit, like, your story about shitting in a bag. That's milk <laughs> because you, right Because there. you had a yeah. bad taco. And I said, okay, I promise. And so now I will tell you the story of the other time I shit my pants. <laughs> How about that? That's good. How about that? Well, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. still a deal with her. Okay. What I would do is if I was doing a play or I was doing a show with kids, they'd get bored. And then I would start a fart war. Mm-hmm. And basically, a fart war is where you walk by a kid. It's a great movie. You fart at him. Uh-huh. Yeah, right? Farts war. Fart war. <laughs> and you fart at him, and then you keep score. They oh. fart at you, you fart at them. Mm-hmm. And I'm an older man, so I'm a pretty good farter. Sure. And so I would start a fart war. I get it going. I'm up like 8 4 on <laughs> some kid. Oh, yeah. I see him standing over at craft service. I've got one locked and loaded. Mm-hmm. So I walk up on this kid, he's just getting his breakfast. And a fart, but I shat my pants. What? Right at craft services. Right at craft services. It, it was the morning, and I oh. knew it was. I, and I knew it happened instantly, and so I, I just. You I, win, by the way. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I waddled up to <laughs> my room, and I had to see what the damage was, and so I ditched my pants, and I'm like, "Now pants are okay. Underwear, goodbye." I put them in a bag. What, I, what? Let's just turn back the clock. A yes, second if you like. What, what event like. is this? Uh, play Chuck E. Cheese. Kids oh, Choice no, Awards. This is a, right. this is a, a children's show. Hospice sh- work. This is a Where ch- are we? This is a children's show, and it's on the Warner lot. It's a show with a bunch of kids. Oh, okay. So they like the fart war. Right, right, right. Sorry, continue. Up in the room. Okay, so I get up there, I ditch my underwear, <laughs> and then I have to take them down in a bag and dump them down in a dumpster. Right. You know, because sure. I'm so fancy. Right. Yeah. You know, you've got the tour coming by. you got to <laughs> wave, be right. cool. Mm-hmm. And I got back there, and then I cleaned myself up. I freeballed it for the rest of the day yeah. because, you know, there was trouble. Mm-hmm. And then I got a call in my dressing room saying, hey, we're, we're ready for you. And so I go down. I hit all my jokes, and they let me go. Now, the point is— even if you shit your pants, you got to be a pro. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Well done. The show goes on. Yeah. Yeah, the show goes on. It is what it is. I do like the visual of you tiptoeing down, you know, crab walk into the dumpster and someone going, and to your right is Fred Stewart, everybody, wave! Oh, oh, I had a bad one once when I was, I, I used to, when I had my fancy house, when I was still like fancy TV, I lived across from Halle Berry, and one of the uh, tour guides came around and... Uh, I was opening up the thing and I was just throwing my trash away. Oh, like I the didn't Hollywood know, Star, the yeah, the Hollywood yeah. Star thing. Mm-hmm. And I, and this woman like uh, takes out her camera, and then the guy says, "Oh, Halle Berry lives over here, and over here is oh, it's French Stewart." And I just remember she went, "Oh." <laughs> like, like she couldn't, she couldn't be more disappointed. Like I paid just seven dollars like, for oh, this. Oh, I thought I was going to get Keanu Reeves. It's just this guy. God damn it! Like what? Beverly Hills Chihuahua three. Get out. Yeah, I'm All trying right. to think. Let's see if we can figure out famous people we've lived across, across from. Across from. Oh God. You, Brian, you want to grab a smoke <laughs> with me? Yeah. Now, it's it's got to be. It's got to be <laughs> across or across. Jason, it can't be down the street or okay. whatever it is. It's just got to be kind of a cross. I across. I had John Cryer. Oh, but very nice. That guy. was pre two and a half men, right? So uh, you had it Ducky. Was no big comeback, the, the right? Ducky. Years. Yeah, yeah. Ducky. Then I had Patrick Dempsey. He was he was a few houses away, but pre that was pre McSteamy. <laughs> so I I actually had more juice. <laughs> Than <laughs> these two did yeah. when I met them. Right. Then I had K 
Kathy Bates. Oh. Who oh my. may have moved into Cryer's house after okay. after he was moved out. Was this pre misery or was she famous? She was famous. This is she was definitely famous during this this portion of her life. <laughs> I love how we're that, just breaking it down to is it so it's pre misery <laughs> or is it uh, No, I, I don't It's about Schmidt what, era. Yeah, about Schmidt era. <laughs> what year was misery? Nineteen ninety. A ninety oh yeah. Maybe this 91. is post. I wasn't yeah. near Able to afford a house oh, in, in 1990. Well, he used to live near the Ringwalds as well. Adam did. Oh! He was friends with them. I forgot, and I wanted to bring it up when we were talking about first cars, and so we should talk about your first car. By the way, so your first car is probably limited to cars that were rental cars, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> your dad <laughs> you a Mini Cooper yeah. or something. That would have yeah. worked out. Yeah, the first one was like, uh, the one that they, like, that was just a family car was the, uh, it was like a, Pontiac Tempest. Oh yeah! And Again, it, no idea what that is. And it was one where uh, it, 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 they would tell me, like, okay, in order to start this car, before you gotta you feather gotta, the pump, like you gotta pump, pump that, pump it a few things, right. and then hit it, right. but don't stay too long, and then right. pump it. Yeah, there's it was a, one of those. There's protocols. There that, were protocols. That was yeah. basically. Every car had an alarm built into it because the alarm was sort of the code. You know what I mean? That's you got to right. jiggle the oh, keys. Sure. You just jiggle it. <laughs> exactly. Jiggle the ignition. Exactly. Turn it half a turn. Then turn it back. Then pump it twice. Pump it twice. Don't flood it. Yeah, don't do D- it. Just pump it twice and start. But before it catches, turn it back off yeah, again and wait. I'll just walk. <laughs> like, just wait. Yeah. Right? You've got to be patient. Or else, uh, you know, just uh, I had the classic uh, eight-track Cassette where you had to put the matchbox underneath so that mm-hmm. it would engage. You know, it was right. just. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just poor people. You had to shove a spoon in yeah, there. Yeah, you got to put something in there so oh. that you can get eight tracks of Journey. You, you, yeah. know the, you know the weird. Oh, I just had a weird thought that there's no way I haven't had this thought before. But, and Chris, you might even be able to look for it. So, what I wanted to bring up is the Ringwalds grew up down the street from me, but they were poor. This right. is when they were poor. The poor Ringwalls. And the older sister, Beth, her first car was like a 77, 78 Toyota Corolla, which she had painted pink. Ooh. She liked, She was one of these girls that wore the pink sweaters and, and pink. paint the car and whatever. This is pre-pretty yeah. and pink. Fortuitous. Which is weird. Yeah. That it ended up that way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, real quick, are you familiar with that there was a 1962 Pontiac Tempest Le Mans? No, but... It, oh, we didn't have that one. Okay, because yeah. the other ones are just <laughs> absolute fucking shit shows. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it, it, and that's what ours was. Got yeah. it. I may be bringing this around <laughs> even further, but I think, was one of Molly's first big movies called The Tempest? Mm, that doesn't sound good. Shakespearean oh, wow. adaptation? What was, you gotta, there's a lot kind of coming back. There's at something, you. some version of that, or some something this close to that. Something. 1982, the Tempest. Tempest. Oh. That was her first A rom-com movie. with Susan, Susan Sarandon and Gina Rollins? Yeah, or Jenna. Uh, or Jenna, you're good. That is insane. Raul Julia? How, that just came out of your, your meat box, your, your, that's your right, brain head. Right on my ball sack. <laughs> right yeah. on your ball sack. This yeah. is 1982. That's like when we were both just probably graduating from high school. That's right. And you were going to see that movie. What's I, up with you? <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird movie for a 15 year old to <laughs> yeah. play in or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense at all. But I liked her sister with the pink car right. and her car. That she got what you know yeah. when you could of all people would get paint jobs on their cars like it was no big whoop like Earl Shine exactly. would Earl paint Scheib. your car for forty four bucks yeah and we didn't worry so much about like oh they bringing it down to the bare metal and they're pulling all the jams and rubber off the it's like no, no, no. just go get you change the color of your car with this dude for fifty bucks yeah and people you, just yeah did you it. go over and you get your gremlin painted like a pair of Levi pants right and you move on with your life you and think you, you think French is kidding. No. I, they they have a Levi Gremlin. Yeah, a Levi Gremlin, and then you they, go get I, your picture taken at Olin Mills, and you call it goddamn day. <laughs> yeah, they had, now Now it sounds like you're talking to your daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah that's pretty funny. AMC had a car called the Gremlin. Okay. And they painted it blue. All right. They put a pinstripe of a stitch on it. Of that's course. Right. They put Levi's, uh, a decal on the side of it. Looks and good. And the interior, interior was denim seats. Yeah. Who the hell this would is, want that? Well, uh, this is what we were doing in 1978 while the Japanese were eating yeah. our fucking lunch. That's like, right. They had to be laughing their ass we, off. We like, were more American. 
<laughs> like we had to get more Americans yeah. somehow. No, uh, nah, we, we, we were just the, standing in gas Levi's lines get, trying to get some. Do not show us a gremlin. Show us a Levi. Is that a Levi uh, gremlin? No. Oh, no, I'm, no. It's got there's a little a picture, sticker. There's a picture with the interior, and it is something to behold. You it has the little it, yes. rivets, the little Levi rivets. No, it does not. It, it sure as shit we does were, on the car seat. Sure you the seats? <laughs> we were nuts. We yeah. were all high on cocaine. That was yeah, we were high on cocaine. Oh, is there one? Yeah. Here, I'm sending this to Ben. More Levi than that, or am I making yes, that up? Yes, I'll show you the interior. Oh, it was a whole time. I remember like going to a place like called Skate Ranch, wearing kiss makeup, <laughs> and trying to buy like a lady a mini pizza so that I could like get working with her. Well, I don't know. was 47 at the time. <laughs> that's, that's the issue. Far wars <laughs> on wheels, people. Let's go. Cue it up. <laughs> Come on, yeah. we're yeah, gonna snap was, that whip. This Grab was recently. On. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The seat has rivets in the middle. Yes, it was a crazy. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. What the crap is that? But yeah. what I'm we saying is, you want to know how the Japanese got from point oh seven of the market <laughs> in 1968 yeah. to 81 percent of the market right in there. 1983? Yeah. This is how we were we were spending time trying to novelize cars with crossover brands and stuff, and they're like, we're just going to make indestructible cars it, that get 40 exactly miles right. to get 40 miles Like, our commitment to the Pinto was just uh, right. unstoppable. I don't know what happened, but it, we, but, and then we did, like, we had to, like, wait for gas. You remember that? Like, oh, we, we were just, just talking, talking about, about it. Yeah, yeah, the embargo. Yeah. Did your, um, today is this, uh, anyway, um, there's another weird coincidence, but I, I won't, I won't bore you with it because it won't. It won't intrigue many of you. Oh, no. Only, only Go with the few. hard sell? <laughs> uh, well, I was... See if the... Hey, Chris, tell me if the uh, Unser's... I don't know if you can hear me. The, oh, yeah. Uh, were the Unser's the Pikes Peak? I know who the Unser's are, but, I mean, did they do a lot of Pikes Peak stuff? Because there's one family. It's like a NASCAR family, but it's also Pikes Peak. Yeah, they're also from Albuquerque. They, like, they were, they were, they were big ass into, like, Indy 500 stuff. Yes. But, but I can't I don't remember the they, Pikes. The, the, yeah. the, the part that was interesting is I did my CarCast podcast earlier today. We were talking about Pikes Peak and who's going to run Pikes Peak and they paved Pikes Peak. It's a big race up the hill. And I was thinking to myself the whole time, oh, God, what's that family, this NASCAR, Indy family, this shit? There's a couple families, yeah. and I couldn't think of the, the Andrettis like and stuff Fernhard's like that. Voices. So I'm sitting here, and I, you know, there's that window where we're talking about it, and I'm kind of going, hey, what the hell? Who's the Pikes Peak family? <laughs> and then at some point, I go, I can't recall it, and I, I yeah, left it on. alone. And then French comes in here, and at his cocktail party, he's got Bobby Unser in there or Al Unser, whatever yeah. who's in there and I go oh Unser yeah from Pikes Peak yeah. and uh, Bobby Unser became the legend of Pikes Peak so you are 100% right you should not have bored us with that that's story. right you know, know what but also I, I remember when I was a kid my uh, my stepdad built me a uh, uh, Go kart out of like a McCullough chainsaw engine. Yeah, but chainsaws and, are what yeah, they used. That's what we used, and they would like. And I would go to this track, and there was always just one kid that was just burning a hole in the place, and he would just go by you, and you're like, I'll just never be as good as that kid, Al Unser Jr. Wow, <laughs> just started karting, kick, just kicking your ass every time, and it's after a while you're like, I don't want to go. Bobby Unser attended French's birthday cocktail party. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. That, that's what triggered me into the name I couldn't recall yeah. two hours ago. The most violent answer, I believe. Really? Oh, allegedly. Huh. Yeah, those guys would be like, I've interviewed those guys. They're like, hey, after uh, after we do the race uh, Friday night, we'd have a fight. That's <laughs> just how they did it. It was, like, yeah. it was like dessert to the entree. Like, when we were done racing... Yeah. Then we'd fight. <laughs> then we'd fight. <laughs> it was a common thing. Who would they fight? Fight other racers. Other racers. Who did something to them on the track that they, the, the whole thing about whatever happens on the racetrack, each person who's involved is equally, as equally convinced it's the other person's fault 100% of the time. That's and right. And that's why you have to fight. And then they go fight. The Costanzas, uh, the, the Festivus there. Oh, that's right. And the yeah. feats of strength. That's right. Got a lot of problems <laughs> with your that's people. Why. That's it. You drink your milk. <laughs> And then you go get in a fight because yeah. you're all milked up. Yeah, uh, after winning the Indy 500. After winning. So the French, you, you you landed on your feet with your stepdad because your stepdad yeah. was a good enough guy to make you a go kart. Yeah, he was your, a good guy. Your dad was trying to steal steal the wheels off a rental car to make it's you a go kart. It's a quandary, isn't it? How did you get the good stepdad? 
Oh, uh, I think my my mom uh, took a, a hard left turn and then a hard right turn, mm. and uh-huh. so she just, uh, uh, you know, my dad just uh, was was just a bunch of junk, and then and then uh, she got one that was just she he's just very measured. He's the guy who mows the lawn and like does everybody's taxes. Mm-hmm. When did you get this guy? I got this guy when I was about uh, I think like second grade third grade somewhere in there and then uh but before my dad like you know because my dad it was like a, a a shift where i saw this guy coming and i thought oh crap f- great because i like my dad he'll put you in a backyard fighting club <laughs> with other children <laughs> well, where, after like, after where the race are betting on you <laughs> after the go-kart race you and al jr would go out there and scrap yeah, right? go out and scrap you know, it's just like he told me okay look you know you're gonna be at a party and some kid might you know come up and he might you know he might want to fight you, and so what you want to do is just start from the head down. You just you grab his hair, you poke his eye, you hit his nose, you you hit his neck. You, like he's telling me all this stuff, and I'm like, "What is this a party, or is this not a party, or what's is what's going on?" Sex dungeon? Yeah, it's a sex dungeon. What's happening? And then the next thing you know, some kids coming up and like you know pushing you, and you're like, "Oh, this is like real. This is an actual. This is my life now." Okay, all right. So by the time my 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 stepdad showed up, it was like ah. Uh, Chef's kiss, mm. you know. Maybe he's a little boring, but mm. I'll, Great. I will take it. I will take it. And uh, yeah, he's how old were you when guy. the stepdad showed up? Like eight, nine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did your dad outlive your stepdad? Uh, my dad, my dad. Uh, yeah. Well, no, my dad is uh, my biological dad's dead now, but that was a whole nother can of worms because he like died in Santa Fe. And then they said, "Well, he's got a will, and he he doesn't he didn't leave anything to anybody because he didn't have anything." <laughs> but so it all goes to the kids, and so well, he's got his Hertz his Express card. Whole punch cards. Here you go, he's in the Million Mile Club. Yeah. No, we showed up, and there was like basically me and my sister show up, and there's just a ton of guns that the ATF had to take, and he didn't wow. have much else. He just had a bunch of guns, and so. Then we're just sitting with all these guns, and we're like, what are we going to do with these? And people are showing up going like, hey, you know, French owed me money, and um, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, well. Milton French the yeah. third. Would you like a, would you like a gun? <laughs> you know, like, you're like just hey, we don't know what to do with them or whatever. But he also had this thing where he had two dogs that were, one of them was dead, a Bouvier Flanders, giant. Mm. And then the other one was like, Still there, and they said, "Well, he wants to be buried with his dogs." Oh boy! And I well, said, "You got the gun right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Make short work of it." Yeah. No, I was like, "Well, what? What am I supposed to do with that?" I'm like, "I'm not now." And so I said, "Okay, well, look, I'll, like his girlfriend seemed to want to keep the other dog, and so I took the ashes of the one dog and then the ashes of my dad, and then I just like put him in my garage for like five years." <laughs> You know, I'm like, look, I'm not going to kill a dog for your ass. No. How long did your stepdad hang around for? He's still around. Wow. Yeah, he's still there. Good. Yeah, he's uh, he's rock solid. He, uh, yeah, he he just uh, retired a few years back. He likes to go bowling. Mm, that's a dad. That's yeah, a that's a, he's a solid dad. Like just yeah. a guy from Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Uh, he actually knows how to fix things oh. and do things. Mm. You know. I was like, I was largely raised by women, so I, I don't have any skills that way other than being a listener. How are you doing, Gina? Oh, uh, you know, it's been okay. It's been kind of a hard day. Okay, that's enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> being a listener. Yeah. Uh, all right, let me hit uh, stamps.com if you've got a small business. Inflation, well, that's not helping. If you're looking for a way to cut costs, use stamps.com to mail and ship, plus exclusive discounts like 30% off of USPS rates and 86% off of UPS rates. We've used stamps.com here for 12 years plus. They came on early as a sponsor, and we've always used them. Um, we have the scale in the back. We send out the swag and the books and the merch. It's all with stamps.com. You can start mailing and shipping with stamps.com and keep more money in your pocket. Sign up. 
Use the promo code ADAM for a special offer, including a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts at Stamps.com. So go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter ADAM. That's Stamps.com. Uh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. I uh, We've used them the whole time I've been here. It's Love been it. over... 12 years. All right, we'll take a quick break. French going to hang out, and we'll do the news right after this. Oh. On Great Magnet number three oh, incident boy. of today. Uh-oh. I just looked down on French's fact sheet. Uh, third Rock from the Sun. We remember. Mom. Some of us remember. The Middle. And the reason I say The Middle, that's a very good show. Yeah. I don't. Is it still on? No. They, they wrapped up a couple of years ago. It was a funny show. Yeah, it funny was solid. sitcom. It Just was really like solid. Single camera, not big and over the top, mm-hmm. but just kind of really, it kind of low key, but just sort of funny, straight ahead, low key. Yeah, good cast, really good. Really solid cast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not not full of recognizable right. people or anything. 09 to uh, 18. So it ran for yeah, a while. Yeah, it was oh. fantastic. It was oh, really... yeah. Patty Heaton. Sorry. Yeah, Patty gonna... Heaton. It's terrific. Uh, and. Like, like what I know is like I would play like the vice principal, and if I'm doing a comedy, I'm the vice principal who's like upset with the kids, and then if I'm doing a drama, I'm a pedophile. But it, <laughs> but it's just it's the same sweater vest either way. Sure. Come on, let's same do the farting vest. game. Yes. Fart wars. <laughs> Here in we the go, van. everybody. In the van, everybody. Fart wars. <laughs> one in the shoot. <laughs> Blam. Got one chamber. <laughs> Pistons almost at the end of the throw. Yeah, yeah. Let's not have this happen no, again. No, no. I'm I'm the Kobe Bryant of fart wars. So so, so I so here's I had this this weird uh, I had this weird thought today. So before I came in. Uh, I've, I've, I've fired up my cold plunge tub. I've been getting in the pool, uh, but now the pool's getting warm because mm. it's getting warm outside. And my yeah. daughter's decided to heat the pool and have her friends over. So oh, it's right. like, it's too warm, too warm for too me warm. to get into. So uh, I do shout. Well, you can't drive the incredible <laughs> golf cart without the warm That's water. Right. Right. You need, you need the Caribbean under you. So. I douched out the tub, which hadn't been running in six months because I've been in the pool, and I filled, changed a filter and refilled it and got it plugged in and got it going. Well, by by douched out, do you mean just by you being in it? Oh, <laughs> yes. yeah. But it, but in but in a calculated way. That, oh, I see what you're saying. Where I was able to get yeah. the 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 scuba off the off yeah. the rim. So I, I I cleaned it, I filled it, I plugged it in, I got it. It's at 45 degrees. And I got into it uh, this morning for the first time in, in a while. And uh, then I had this thought while I was sitting in it, which is um, the getting into the tub, it seems painful, but it's, it's really not that bad when you get in. And by the end, I usually sit in there for three minutes. Mm. I actually went four minutes because at the end, I was actually semi comfortable in this forty five degree water, but I, it was ex- the middle was excruciating. The middle. I, I the first twenty <laughs> seconds were fine. You get to forty five, fifty seconds in, and you're like, I can't. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to take this for another two minutes. The middle minute sucks, and then you kind of even out. Mm. And then I started thinking philosophically, like when you exercise, like. I shadow box at night. Shadow box, the beginning's fine. You're fresh, you're whatever. You try to go for 20 minutes. You get to somewhere about minute six, and it's like, I didn't pretty, I don't feel that good right now. Yeah. Somehow when you get to minute 18, you actually feel a lot better than you felt at, at minute seven. Yeah. And then I was thinking about this sort of analogy of either be on the beach or be out beyond the breakers, but then the middle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The middle's the hard part. You're, you get it into a really freezing is. tub, you're you're better at the beginning and you're fine at the end. The middle scares you because you're the middle is like you go, I'll never make it to the end. Yeah. This is brutal. I'm running out of gas. And then I started thinking about the series, the middle. <laughs> middle. That's there where French go. kicks in. I was like, oh, the middle. I was like yeah. walking around the house going, the middle. That's You don't want to live in the middle. You don't want to be there politically. Yeah. You get the shit kicked out of the middle. Middle yeah. class. Right. No, you don't want to live in the middle. It's painful in the middle. Be and then, Patricia Heaton, but don't be French Stewart yeah, in the middle. Do then, not be me. Trust me. And then I started thinking it's about the sitcom. Yeah. And then I just looked down on my page. Wow. <laughs> 
Do you remember football conditioning and how rough it was? Like the football conditioning was tough because psychologically you never knew it was going to end. It was right. like you're doing a, a million jingle jangles or you're doing 10. You don't right. know. Yeah, you and, don't know. and finally when the whistle blew and it was over, it's like, oh, sweet relief. But the never knowing when it would end was fucking brutal. That's the brutal yeah, part. Yeah, no, that's, that's the brutal part. There's something serious called jingle jangles. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fred, yeah. show us. They, <laughs> I got spurs that jingle, 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 jingle as oh, I go oh, riding merrily oh, along. Well, along. And they say, <laughs> hey, ain't you glad you're single? Ain't you single? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh, Sally <laughs> J. <laughs> Here's a song by a gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> that song, I believe, is the theme uh, written for uh, Blazing Saddles and also High Noon. Mm. It's rewritten for both of those movies. Really? Yeah. Lord. Oh, look it up. I'm curious. You're doing a lot of making fun of Christopher Lowell earlier. And I, I see know, you're rivaling I'm, him right now. I'm singing westerns. <laughs> uh, it, I, I've been thinking about this quote. It's been really like sticking with me lately. And it's it reminding me of what you said. Suffer the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. I love that. Mm. I'm, it's really been like rolling around in the old noggin lately. I like yeah. That. No, it's, it, it is so true. It's yeah. just such a – it's so weird that if you get in that freezing cold water, it is so much worse one minute in than it is three minutes in. Yeah. And unfortunately, you have to know that yeah. because yes. if you know that – You're in the Because dip. you think you're going progressively – into more Be pain right. and discomfort. If it's this bad at one minute, it's going to be brutal at two minutes and unbearable at three. But your body is weird and it evens out yeah. to the point where at three minutes, I was like, well, I'm going to hang out for another minute because wow. I do not feel this as discomfort. Oh, I, I, I've got this daughter who like, we went to Lake Tahoe and it was uh, nobody was getting in the water because it was just so cold. But she like she kind of goes for it that way. And so she got in. And at first it was just like, oh, I'm not even sure that I should have a child in this water. <laughs> this feels like polar bear club a little bit. Like it's a child. I'm like, uh, what's the difference between going to the emergency yeah. room or like. You're on the hook for this. Yeah, I'm on the hook for it. And then so we were in there for a while and then we all just calmed down. But that first couple of minutes was awful. And then we're just kind of in. And then I look over and I just see that her like lips are blue, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> that's probably that's probably cut off for now. You're about to get charged. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to get charged. But the thing is, is that uh, like on her report card, the thing that I like most is they say, okay, well, you know, you're good at this, you're good at that, you're not as good as this, you need help with that. Uh, but she's kind, and she has grit. Oh. oh, they put grit on there. They put grit. Wow. Like, is that a public school? It's no, it's it's a snotty ass private school. Uh, yeah, that, it's weird to talk you about. You don't grit usually in get grit system. at a no, private school. No, that's good. I went to public school in Albuquerque, and I I got grit, but I don't. You know, you came it, by it honestly. It's, it's mostly fear, right? And, mm -hmm. Survival, know, worry, right? Yeah. Jingle Jangle Jingle published yep. in 1942. I'm 100% wrong. I, I they knew, all sound alike. Though. The good news is, is I knew you were wrong. I knew you did. I saw it. That. Uh, but that's all right. But the jingle, sound alike jingle, is for jingle. a reason, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we often wonder and sort of pontificate about the kind of unemployed or unemployable people that are in the audience for, like, daytime talk shows. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a new one out of town that is really getting all the attention. It's the one, of course, in Fairfax County, Virginia, where the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial is. Oh, yeah. So, I want them all arrested. Oh, my God. They, it is a fucking circus. So when the trial first started. It's the same with the free Britney people. Mm -hmm. Like, Michael people, Jackson it's trial. fucking right. Wednesday. It's right. two in the afternoon. How many of you fuckers are on disability who are holding a sign above your head? Or how many said, I can't go into the office and perform basic functions? You just... You just used uh, a fucking glue stick and 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 bedazzled yeah. a fucking piece of cardboard for four days, and you're now holding it over your head and jumping up and down. Don't tell me you couldn't fucking go in and shuffle some papers around in an office yeah. setting. Yeah. yeah. In That's an office setting. Yeah. That's right. So apparently when it's this first starting, we'll just have this on mute. This is them. This is Johnny's car driving in every morning. Uh, fans would line up around 5 a.m., but then, like, the word got out. It got crazier. Fans would line up at 10 p.m., 
the night before for a 9 a.m. start in the morning. The sheriff had to put a stop to that. There's a sign that says effective immediately. The line for the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. Spectators are not permitted to loiter or camp out before 1 a.m. So they all start lining up at 1 a.m. There's fights because people are jumping the line. But why? Because they want to be in there. And when Amber Heard went up on the stand... The line was through the city. It was crazy. So here's how they do it. TMZ uh, reports that the court officials have 100 wristbands, like you're at a concert. They give out the 100 wristbands on a first-come, first-served basis. Then there's another 100 to 150 wristbands for the overflow room. And still tons of people are turned away every day. Apparently, there's been multiple screaming matches. Uh, There's even a black market where people are selling their wristbands. Mm, and yeah. Sid Geek? Yes, it's a mm-hmm. go on stuff, Hub. I, I, that's like, sh- you know, and, and you look at it and it's like, okay, well, what really happened? Like, uh, uh, a mean, pretty girl married uh, a drunk dude and sh- shit went as it goes. <laughs> Once upon a time. Yeah. That's how it goes. You that's really just, uh, just boiled it down to its finest points. That's really pretty much it. She's yeah. just mean and shitty and he's like drinking big drinky. And so that that always goes great. <laughs> you know, that always that always works out pretty well. And then they're all shocked, like, "What?" Yeah. I, I just know that uh, if you ever have to record your spouse, yeah, secretly, yeah, mm. things aren't going great. Right, yeah. I like to stand up for the alcoholics and say, <laughs> "Yeah, no, sure." <laughs> it, it takes two to tango. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 you no got, for sure. You, you got, got drinky, bottle? drinky McDrinky. Yeah, you, you got drinky McDrinky. Right, but. If that person's spouse is laid back, Mick laid back, mm-hmm. then we don't have a situation. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Uh, like, drinking Mick drink, you usually just go to sleep. Sleepy I get Mick drunk Mick. and I got a lab named Phil, and he comes in and lays down. I don't get up and go, what's the beef? <laughs> but you come get my yeah. grill. Yeah. Now there's going to be an issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So no. he may be lubricated, but she's also you got to find a mean person to come in there and start in. Yeah, well, that's when the fireworks. Well, start that flying. he did. Yeah. and I, I actually watched. I, I've been watching this like fucking crazy. And um, there's also now rumors because they she, he has a very fiery, very pretty one of his lawyers. Oh yeah, and oh, yeah. she has been when she cross examined Amber. I was even like, damn girl, like oh. is this personal? She's like, oh, how convenient. And isn't that snarky? And making all these little side comments. And now there's a rumor that she and Johnny Depp are secretly a thing. Oh, that's been floating around. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I've watched TMZ. Of course you know this have, already. They have stills of him like, like grabbing pulling, her elbow. P- pulling the chair out for oh, her. I can and, see why. Like, yeah. You know, she was sorting out that other lawyer. Oh. And I just kept thinking, oh, okay. I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, you know, I, I would put my marriage in jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah, so they need her, obviously, the optics of a guy going after Amber Heard, who's a battered woman. Well, that's yeah, not going to work terrible. optically. Oh, no. no. So yeah. they have her, but yeah, yeah, she yeah. goes no. all in. Yeah, she she's a mean little lizard. Feisty, mm-hmm. totally. Yeah, she really is. Vazquez, I don't remember what her first name is. But yeah, it is uh, something to behold. Yeah, I heard she had a boyfriend, but her boyfriend was only in the in the months department. Like she's had a boyfriend mm. for seven months or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I I don't think that that would like stand up against a Johnny. Johnny Depp. Not against Johnny. Depp. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carl. No, uh, look, we had a great time at the Red Lobster and all, but and look, you you give me the tour of the FedEx facility you worked yeah. at was yeah. awesome. It was great. I'm very VIP. I, yeah. I, I thought all. I didn't know there were any electric forklifts. I thought they were all propane powered. That's right. That's anyway, right. so <laughs> informative and educational. Yeah. Yeah. So right. let me just 21 Jump Street my way <laughs> right. out of this I'm relationship. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to go to Malibu now and uh, yeah. I'll see you around. That'd yeah, quite and listen, Valley level. Village is awesome, yeah. and the duplex is fantastic, except for the Armenians upstairs, <laughs> but it's a cute place you have, it's a, but yeah. you it's understand. Great. Look, we all love Highland Park, but... Uh, <laughs> have you been to Nobu out? Oh, of course. Uh, sorry, no, sweetie. Sorry. Of, course, of, course of course you have. Not. Of course That's <laughs> yeah, a dumb course. question, but oh. the point is, is, he has a membership over at the... Uh, oh, God, what's that club <laughs> over there? So- so Soho, it's next to Soho Moho. House. Have you been? Oh, there, there I go again. Yeah. Of course, you haven't been to the Soho. House. <laughs> anyway, it's probably taking longer than even Johnny sending his uh, 
he actually has an SUV, and then there's actual throngs of fans that actually follow the SUV. So unbelievable. So I'll be moving out. Are you familiar, us LA people? I had never heard of this. Do you know the Eastern Building downtown in downtown LA? Mm -hmm. What that is? No. It's like Ben. Maybe find a picture of it. It's like this really old, beautiful building that I'd never heard of. That's where Johnny Depp lives. He has like five penthouses in the Eastern Building downtown. Oh. I don't know anybody right. really lived downtown, and it is. Awesome. I, I did a little investigating. He has houses all over LA, but the Eastern Building, I've never even heard of it. I couldn't like It's like very Art Deco. I couldn't live downtown because that's just one like one way street after another. Yes. Like just to get any oh. place, you oh. just like it's a you, nightmare. You just gotta turn around in circles and then right. suddenly you're like on Alvarado and you don't know what happened. And it's like <laughs> wow, doing the, the yeah. blessing of the pets. And then it turns into the <laughs> yeah. turns into the movie Judgment Night where you go down one way and there's a bunch <laughs> of gangbangers and homeless guys and <laughs> fires right. on the street. And you're like, right. oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've never noticed this building, I've never heard no, of this building. It's beautiful. Yeah, so it's apparently gorgeous. he has many penthouses there. And it was funny because her sister, Amber sister Whitney was on the stand, you know, taken up for her. Oh, yeah. And it's hard because they're like, and where did you live? Oh, well, we lived in Penthouse 3. Well, where did the friends of, oh, they lived in Penthouse 2. Johnny was very generous. We all lived in all the penthouses. Younger or older sister? Younger, but... Hold on. Yeah. I feel like that's a sight unseen bang right there. Yeah. <laughs> Amber Heard, younger sister. Well, it doesn't always work out, Gina, but I'm just saying. Broken clock. Oh, you, have, you only have so much information yeah. and the yeah. sight unseen bang. I get it. Yeah. I think Amber Heard's younger sister named right. Whitney, mm -hmm. let's say most guys... Well, but that's the yeah. thing. Go the, pot commit to that, Yeah, right? yeah, because you got an Amber and you got a Whitney. Mm-hmm. Ah, something's going to go down. <laughs> Come on. So you're saying her sister's not hot? Oh, I mean, she looks like a normal, nice girl. I'm playing She's a normie. Normal. Okay. I'm French. Well, <laughs> we'll <slow this> <laughs> no. <laughs> she, <laughs> she doesn't look like a like a, a movie star. She looks like a regular like girl. Right. I don't know. I Find a picture see. of Whitney. I, I want to see. Yeah, let's, and you might let's look under up. Enriquez. I think that's her married name. But you know, Kathy what? what Bates regular girl or no, Gina Grad regular. Girl? Gina Grad regular. Oh, girl. Now we're talking. <laughs> All right. Are we talking? Yeah. Are we talking about like? Uh, uh, I'd say compared to Amber Heard, Midwestern hot. I don't know what. Yeah. Well, what I'm what I'm saying is is Cindy, well, that's a doll, Cindy, that picture, Cindy but, Crawford so. and Randy Gerber have a kid. <laughs> yes. You yeah. do not need to see a photo of her before you know you're in. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's it's right. like a normal, normal looking. Well, you were shaking your head like you bit a lemon. Because would you compare her to Amber Heard? I don't know. I have to. Chris has to show us a. I need a doll. I need a decent picture of her. This was her. This was the. This uh, was what she looked the like on the stand. The stand is frumped down. But her hair, it's like she had a whole hair and makeup team. I mean, it's like in like full highlights. Still an angle, though. Right. There's okay, not, that it's advice. not. It's you not. Know, they, 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 that's why the rapper wears Bing Crosby's cardigan <laughs> when he's in court. Like, he, they, Mark Aragos tells him, put the fucking cardigan on. Put no, on the that's cardigan. true. That's true. She yeah, did. Take the Fubu wife beater off and put the fucking right. cardigan, on. Put the Amber, cardigan on. Amber the other day wore um, the Nehru jacket that uh, Mike Myers wore as Dr. Evil. Oh, right. So they do make you play it down. You're right about that. So she's a cute girl. She's but like, Am like Amber coming in like in a dude suit seems like, wouldn't you want to be all just sort of wifey? And it's funny because I read this article, hard hitting stuff about how Amber Heard starts dressing like her boyfriends. Mm. And yesterday in the courtroom, she was basically in Johnny's three piece suit. They mm. were dressed identically. So that's kind of like her thing, I guess. He said he'll never, she'll never see his eyes that's again. Right. So was he that the thing? So he won't look at her. He's never looked up at her when she's on the stand. He puts his blue framed glasses on. He is uh, done. This is cute. Oh, yeah. Not, I was only looking super, at the witness not stand super model, but She's cute. a Kansas 8. That's right. Um, yeah, it was interesting when... They were talking about the dog dropping the deuce versus uh, who dropped the deuce right. versus yeah. how could the I dog have dropped the deuce. Busted dues. a grumpy, as Johnny said. Right. But <laughs> but she Amber bust, worked in. Busted a grumpy. She ate Johnny's weed mm -hmm. and then had stomach. The dog had stomach problems because yeah. the dog ate Johnny's weed as a pup. And, That's uh, animal abuse. It had, had issues. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so much going on. But I think that I know... That's the a, suit. A, like mm -hmm. a dog poop from a... Yeah, from a, so does Johnny. From a, from a lady poop. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Johnny felt the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Really interesting stuff. Um, yeah. So we talked a bit at the beginning of the show, and it's been coming up lately, you know, transgender issues. It's a very hot subject. It's very third rail in some ways. It's also very passe. We are totally over. Oh, we're past it. We are so done with transgender. I'll give you a new topic, a new word. This is where we're at. Done with transgender, in with transracial. Mm. Now, Rachel Rachel Dolezal. Rachel Dolezal was before her time. Oh, yeah. She was a Pioneer. villain. She was a witch. She, everybody wanted to burn on the stake. Okay. We're, we're starting to embrace that now. Um, in the, this May 2nd episode of this Channel 4 series in England, it's this British personality, this guy named or this person named Ollie London sat down with a black woman not named and they discussed whether someone can identify as a different race because Ollie is 31 and they underwent multiple surgeries to look like a member of BTS, the K-pop band. Oh, yeah. And Ollie oh, yeah. seemed to be a very white Human before that, uh, they identify as a they, I, I believe. This is a 40, that's Ollie. This is a 40 second clip of a very long debate, but this will just give you an idea of where we're at now. Millions and millions of people. I think if we've crossed the hurdle of you can change your gender by thinking you're something other than you are, then everything's on the table at this point. There's yeah. no logical <laughs> argument. Like, right. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. is? Yeah. Well, your everything's age? insane then. You know what's funny? is like uh, my, my daughter, like we lost two dogs in one year. They just got old at the same time. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. My daughter's just getting bored and... So I, I'm watching the ASPCA commercials. I get Sarah McLaughlin oh, into boy. a couple of cats. Yep, yep. And mm -hmm. so we get a couple of cats. I go, all right, here we go. And she said, well, I said, well, what? They're from the same litter, this boy, that boy. And she said, well, I wanted a girl. And I said, okay, well, that one's a girl. You're right. We're <laughs> there now. That. It's fine. It's like done. that one's like, so now we got Raymond and Fifi. Perfect. Because they don't, they're not going to the DMV. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. they're just they like, like, you know, and the more you look at Fifi, the more you go, that's a sexy little woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. So, I don't know. I just always feel like, uh, do what you want to do. I don't care. But, like... As long as you're I, a cat. As long as you're a cat. <laughs> Was your? I just want to finish your sentence for you. I appreciate it. Well, and that's... I, I had this little discussion with my friends, because I showed them this clip. And one of the girls made a good point. She said... Or maybe you just you could you could say you're any race you want, dress like it, be like it. But when it comes to like speaking for the community, maybe then shut the fuck up. Well, you know, but like, but be a part of it, but just be quiet. There is a distinct advantage to being black, which is any TV show will put any black person on their show to speak for all black people. Mm -hmm. Which I'd be awesome. I want that for white people. I would like love French. To see you do that. You can ask, I'm speaking for all, all well, of the white men. I am white. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. I, I, let me tell I you come in peace. Let me mostly. What, <laughs> let me tell you what Steve Kerr and Elon Musk are thinking about now. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that would be offensive. Like you could, you could go, could I can't say cracker, but what if I called you a jack? Like a cracker? No. No, no. No, no. no. You would, for, for my people, yeah, we all you agree. will have crossed the line. That's right. They would put one one black person on it, it, that it's the most racist thing in the world. Like they go, it's that way with voting. It's that way. There they go. Well, black person, you're this. That's kind of the opposite of looking at them as individuals. But we do yeah. that. It, I've been arguing about this with, we got to get the black guy to interview the black guy, or we got to get Robin Roberts has to interview uh, Jesse Smollett because we can't have a white person, <laughs> a, a journalist interviewing a black person because they're going to ask him questions and that's not going to work. But I do want to be the guy or I you, guess you want to be the spokesman for the. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, could yeah. we imagine us doing that? Like, oh, we got Jeff Bezos <laughs> over here. We got Ted Nugent over there. We got <laughs> Stephen Colbert over here. Well, Ted right. Nugent, he speaks yeah. for Stephen Colbert. Does he not? Well, look at him. Yeah. They're both come so on. pale. I mean, like, come on. Here comes Kid Rock. Let's go <laughs> check with Kid Rock to <laughs> see if the it's... queen thinking. I'm going to talk to Colbert later on tonight. So I want to clear some things with Kid Rock <laughs> and just right. make sure. I don't want to cross the Hold line. Hold on. T Ted Danson's got something Ted's to say. Ted's got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I don't know why I would bring Ted Danson yeah, into it. Yeah, why'd you bring him in? Lovely this? person. How dare you? Oh, why he's, would I be smirch Ted Danson of all he's people? He's got the greatest career ever because he. Oh boy, does he. He looks, you know, 
Yeah. My my fear, you know, my theory of like how Katy Perry always looks like she's thinking of something stupid. Uh-huh. She Ted looks like he's thinking about something smart. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and he, he just puts his glasses on smart and he face. comes walking yes, into the scene. And oh, I know. And he just looks at you and he looks at the other one. He only says a couple of words and then he like walks out again. Well, that guy's great. Look at him. He knows what he's yeah, doing. What talking about. It's to, I, I went to a dinner party like fundraiser at his house once, and he, like him and Mary Steenburgen. Right. Who's also delightful. Brian. I remember just after the evening going like, Ted Danson, huh? Like, like if, if I were going to go dude, <laughs> I'd go with Ted Danson. You'd go yeah. full Fifi. I'd, be, I'd, go, I'd go full Fifi for <laughs> Ted Danson. Yeah. Yeah. He just looks like he knows what <laughs> well, he's talking that's about. That's from, uh, yeah. what's look the name? B- Baxter. From Becker. Be- Becker. 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 Look how much I love him, though. Yeah, it's true. Well, that's you. I'm yeah, be- that's Yeah, him. I'm bedazzled. I, I barely, re- I bewitched. didn't recognize you with the no. buzz cut. Wow! Yeah, that was you were you did a you did an arc on Becker. Yeah, I did a Becker. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that what Johnny Depp calls feces? Yeah, I dro- drop dropping a Becker. I a Becker. That, that's yeah, I dropped Becker. a Becker. <laughs> dancing with dancing, you dropped a Becker. I, right. I've been saying this for a while, but will you do me a favor and will sure. you and Sean Hayes please do a sitcom together where your brothers? Oh, of course. That would be really helpful. Oh, for I me. love him. Okay, that would be great. Okay, I'll all do right. It. Are Let's, you going to be in it? I would just love to watch it. I'm oh, a P1. Okay. I'll I've watch worked every with Sean Hayes closely. Mm. Oh, from the roast. No, on the woman show. No, I was in like, I don't even know what it is. Remember they used to have calling cards, like whatever. Oh, the 100 collect or whatever it was you did. I did a 1-800 collect commercial with Sean Hayes where we were both trapped in a giant head. I do not remember this. Really? Uh, That's when all the 1-800, like all the. Call ATT. I did one with like Terry Bradshaw. (laughs) All the greats today. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I remember all I, I could remember that. from that whole shoot was they constructed a giant, you know, styrofoam head for us to like climb inside of and they lit the shit out of it inside of the head. But of course the, the ceiling was like six or seven feet high. Was I was just melting inside of oh, this sure. thing. Yeah. And Sean Hayes does not sweat. I remember talking to him. I, I was like, That's I was like standing there, just like I have to stop and pat my, you know. And it's fine if both of you are sweating because then it's just too fucking hot in this head. Yeah. yeah. He's just like, I don't sweat. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Him and oh, Prince Philip. Uh, we Prince have the commercial Andrew. from 99. Oh, 99. So important. <laughs> oh, yeah, but they make it. Oh. There's a lodge. I'll make him turn. Wait a minute. The angle's too sharp. Don't be a wimp. I know what I'm doing. Same commercial. Nice job. Now we're gonna have to call his parents. We'll use one eight hundred collect. Same a buck or two. One eight hundred collect. Now you're being logical. Poor oh, baby. Aww. Nice cat. Hi, mom. <laughs> use your head. One eight hundred collect. Same a buck or two. Or three. Wow. <laughs> well well done. done. Oh, I, I, I forgot. <laughs> When they're like, I got, uh, so they take this, they construct this head. It's on a sound stage, but then, and then they light, they yeah. light the shit out of it. And then yeah. they light it and two hours before you get there. And then I walked into, it's like walking into a fucking oven and I was like, Oh God, so hot. And they're like, Oh, here's this giant Russian fur hat. You got to put this on. And I'm like, why? They're like, Cause your guy's skiing. So you need this. You know, thermal undershirt, like some gloves and a Russian hat and a jumpsuit. And I was like, I'm melting inside of this. Give I it swear. to the guy who doesn't sweat. I know. Yeah, I, I, I like, I, I, I like, I'm, I'm a sweater, but it's just the fear sweats mm. where like I get nervous and I'm just like, oh, and then I just start sweating. The only guy I'm comfortable sitting next to is Wayne Knight. Because, mm. like, Wayne Knight will just, like... Newman. He, yeah, Newman. He's a sweater. Oh, and yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah, just stick to Stick close to me, Wayne. <laughs> We're in this together, brother. There's not enough powder in the world. All right. Let's bring it home. Did we bring it home? We'll do it now. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Okay, that's enough. Gina, Gina, Gina. <laughs> That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, Huntington Beach <laughs> Sea Lakes, that'll be tomorrow night. I think that thing's close to sold out, but you can come on out and sit in the beach tree, people. Do a little um, do a little tailgate and come yeah. say us. Denver, I'll be at the Comedy Works South. That'll be uh, June 24th, 25th. You just go to amcurl.com because I've got live shows all over the place. Bill Browder, everyone, freezing order that is uh, available as we speak on Amazon. And then, of course, French Stewart will he'll come back when the animated series drops on Netflix. And also shoot him a tweet at French Stewart 
as well. Owen oh, Dawson's doing stand up tonight, 7 30, Comedy Chateau, North Hollywood, California. You can get free tickets with the promo code MIKE, all caps. Mike D. Mike D. Oh, I'm sorry. I did like Mike like it was plural. That's what I thought. My, oh, good. <laughs> Mike Dump. Geniuses. Yeah. Mike D. Mike D. All capital. And until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Bill Browder and French Stewart and Gina and Brian saying mahalo. Whoever cast that show knocked out of the park with just the talent packed in. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yeah. you, uh, Lithgow. Yeah, they're I all forgot all Joseph Brendan. Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah, we, we, we all had like a reunion about a, a month or so ago, and it was just the same thing. You just drop in. Everybody's lovely. You know, and not all shows are like that. Like right. sometimes you got a butthole. <laughs> <laughs>